So we are recording now. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, today is March 8th. Our uh, neighborhood council meeting is going to start. It's, uh, what is it? I don't know. How many. The clock is gone here. So uh, 6.05. 6 All right. <clears throat> So uh, let's, uh, can you move the agenda up a little bit? Okay. So uh, let me read the beginning just for any new people we have in there. In conformity with the governor's executive order N-29-20 of March 17, 2020, and due to the concerns over COVID-19, this board meeting will be conducted entirely telephonically. Every person wishing to address the neighborhood council must dial one of the telephone numbers listed above and enter 886-5982-5193. Uh, and then press uh, pound sign to join the meeting, uh, to join the meeting. Instructions on how to sign up for public comment will be given to listeners at the start of the meeting. Uh, public input. Uh, at neighborhood council meetings, the public is requested to dial uh, star nine or when prompted by the presiding officers to address the board on any agenda item before the board takes an action on an item. Comments from the public on the agenda items will be heard only when the respective item is being considered. Comments from the public on, their, uh, on other matters not appearing on the agenda that are within the board's jurisdiction will be heard during the general public comment period. Okay, we're down to item number one. Uh, welcome everybody. Could we call to order and uh, Mr. Guzman, could you call uh, roll? Yes, Mr. Chair. Brock Ashfield. I mean here. <laughs> Our Armando Balderrama. Here. John B. Here. Mary. Here. Adrianita. Here. Ron. Here. John D. Here. Dan Dixon. He's here, he's just gonna raise his hand. Okay. Cynthia. Cynthia. She's here. I saw her Sorry, name. I have to say it out loud, here. Gwen. Here. <clears throat> Laurie. Here. Jan. Here. Melanie. Here. Kelly. Here. Alan. Uh, do you mean Alec? Yes, I'm sorry about that. Excuse Here. me. <laughs> Ray. Here. Chris. Here. Okay, everyone's here. Okay, terrific, thank you, um, Christian. Item number two, uh, kind of have a sad uh, note to pass along to, to those of you who know um, Pete Burmeister. He, uh, you probably recognize the van that's on the screen. Uh, you've probably seen it all over the city. Pete Burmeister used to be a member of this neighborhood council for many years. Um, and when he decided to uh, move on, uh, he was still extremely, uh, very much a participant in this community. Uh, Pete, uh, was very passionate about how he felt about his community. And he was extremely, extremely passionate about his neighbors and neighborhood. Um, to say the least, I know personally, I will miss Pete. 
Uh, he is a terrific uh, gentleman. He, uh, he is someone that I think many people can learn from as far as how he uh, is engaged in his community. So what I'd like to do is take a moment of silence uh, in honor of Pete Burmeister. And if someone would like to say a uh, comment about, you know, uh, Pete, uh, please say so. It, we're going to try to keep it you know, within a minute or so. Um, but I think um, honoring Pete um, is, is, is the least we can do for a person who we all will miss. So if we can take a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Is there anyone who'd like to say anything about Pete, the relationship with him, or what they know I about him? Okay. I I, okay. I, I see Melanie's hand and Cynthia. Do it now. So, uh, let me. Let's go with Melanie, and then Cynthia. You'll be next. Okay. Yeah, I, it's sad. He's a very. I think a lot of people could learn about um, what it means to be like a good neighbor to look out for people aside from neighborhood council when we bought our house here and first moved in he was the first person that came over and introduced himself introduced you know offered to do whatever you know on the lookout for the neighbors all the time around him and he was always willing to help he even with like the park and the businesses and everything in the neighborhood, he was constantly going, going, going and trying to see what he could do about somebody. Even if it wasn't in his power to do it, he still tried and he reached out to try and help, you know, with the neighborhood and with people. And that's the way he did with neighborhood council is he always was trying to find a way to fix things or help with people and the businesses in the area. Thank you, Melanie. Um, Cynthia, I believe you're next. Yeah, um, I came on when Pete came on in 2010. And I remember seeing him and thinking how much energy he had. He had energy till the week he died. It was just amazing how much he cared for everyone. I mean, everyone in the community always was wanting to come on all the community. I mean, the committee, um, meetings and listen to what was happening, even if he wasn't on the board anymore. And I know he loved his dogs. He loved the job of training other people's dogs. And he was always having coffee with the school police and the different police from the different communities. He, he was a go-getter. And um, I think he's going to be very missed by all the people, especially the police officers that knew him. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, Laurie, you're next, and then John. John Barbera. Thank you. Well, to say that Pete was a character is an understatement. <laughs> okay. He was just a, a force of his own. We weren't always on the same side um, of, of uh, how we felt about community issues, but I never doubted that he cared about our community. It was never personal. It was never... Um, you know, um, about him. It was about, as he used to say over and over, I want to improve the quality of life for my, as he would say, community, you know, um, and I appreciated uh, that. And, you know, his van, everybody in town recognizes his van and knows the good works he did with his animals. And my understanding is a lot of the work he was doing the last few years, he wasn't even getting paid for it. It's just, he has a really big heart when it came to his German shepherds. And um, I appreciate all the years he gave to our board and to committees. And yes, he will be deeply missed. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. John Barbera. Yeah, I wanna say that um, I talked to Pete four or five days before he passed on. We, you know, he'd call me, you know, at least once a week and we'd talk about things and what's going on. and you know, what we can do and get with the people. That, that's what he cared about. He, the, the most that Pete would always go around and he'd tell me and, you know, and um, as some of you know, I, he always used to imitate Pete and, and uh, but Pete would always, you know, he, 
the way he was. It was, you know, every time he talked to me, he says, John, you know what? We have to do the community. We have to do right by them. You know, and he always just, he cared about the people and that's what made him, you know, uh, the person that he is. Um, you know, should we have this? Should these be here? Should this go in? You know, um, it, it wasn't, you know, about him. It was about, you know, going door to door and talking to the people to see um, what we can do. Even during this pandemic, he wanted to do it. And, uh, you know, to me, that's a person that, you know, really cared. That was a pleasure for me to the few years that I got to know. Him. Zero, two, five, nine, two, nine, two, eight is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may. Thank you. Uh, John, you want to continue? John? Did what we lose John? That? I don't know what happened there. Hello, John. John Barbera, are you still there? I heard a woman's voice on and she said 025. Yeah, we, know, we all heard that. I think maybe he might have gotten kicked off. He's no. okay. I can still oh, see him. I, you still see him? Well, tell you what, let, let's give him a chance to um, recover. And uh, I thought I saw Gwen's hand come up and then I yes, saw- Yes, he did. Uh, yes, he did. Um, I'm really deeply saddened to hear that he, uh, he passed on. He's, talk about a life force. That, that guy, that guy had enough energy for, I think for all of us and um, every time I turned around in a different area of the South Bay, I was bumping into Pete. Um, over at Alpine Village, I'd bump into him <laughs> at the donut shop, you name it. I'd be down at the dog park. Um, he's, he's quite something and uh, he will be deeply missed, deeply. Thank you, Gwen. Um, Diana, did I... Thought I saw your hand up also. Did you want to say something? You're muted, Diana. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure since I'm not a board member if I should say something, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, everyone really has said it. Um, Pete has, Pete will really, really be missed in this community for all the things he's accomplished. The thing I think of the most is getting the restrooms in at the park over a lot of that he really was a bulldog on getting that done. And, yeah. you know, no matter how rough Pete was on the outside, his heart was just the heart of gold. And we will, we will really miss hit that, that force in this community. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, I don't see any other hands. Lori, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, his services tomorrow? Um, basically, I just put it up on the screen. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay, so that's the information the, for the services tomorrow. Um, I think Cynthia and Melanie probably know more than I do, but um, to, my, to my knowledge, they're limiting it to 50 people at a time, um, but I wanted everybody to have this information. And it's first come, first serve. They said whoever arrives, they get counted. You don't have to be invited. Yeah, it is inside and it is in the funeral home. Limit 50 people. Um, they are having no police escort to the um, graveside services at um, Green Hills more, um, cemeteries where they're going after, but there's no police escort or anything. They will be doing a some sort of police um, flag presentation hmm. when they bury him. I guess, or at the funeral? When? At the funeral or at the when, burial? At the funeral or before he's laid into rest, but they're only giving him 45 minutes at graveside mm -hmm. is what they said. Right. But they wouldn't allow him to do any this type of services or anything at the graveside or at Green Hills at all hmm. because of COVID. So the rice mortuary, they're letting them have 50 people and that's it. All right. Thank you all for the, uh, the words, the, the, um, 
feelings that you shared. Um, again, I, I think uh, Pete will be missed by all those who know him. But uh, I think uh, if you knew him, you definitely you would Ray, feel the same. One more thing there. too. One of the projects that Pete before he passed away was working on, and one maybe one of the committees would like to take it up in honor of him to try and see if it goes forward was to get, you know, the smokestack in San Pedro to right. get some sort of mural on it, some sort of art, so it make it look better. And it, was actually, it was actually a proposal to make it look like um, the lighthouse. And there's actually yeah, drawings. like the lighthouse, that's what it was. That, yeah, Chuck, Chuck Hart has the drawings. Okay. So maybe it's something that the issues committee or, I mean. Well, I, we, we can certainly uh, have some further discussions offline and figure okay. out what would be appropriate if anyone wants to pick up the cause. Thank you for reminding us, Melanie. You're welcome. <clears throat> um, so we'll move on to item number three. Uh, so I have a couple of things that I would just like to remind you again, uh, any single address by any board member shall be no longer than two minutes. A board member may speak a second time after all board members have had an opportunity to speak uh, if time allows. Uh, board members are required to maintain training and for, I think we're at 100% right now, so I'll skip that. Any changes to committee meeting dates must be communicated to me and Lori uh, so that we can get them on our calendar. Um, so um, let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. And don't forget, there's a there's a way that we're trying to file our documents, and it's uh, on item number three B there. So um, remember when you're doing documents, uh, identify them this way so they can be filed and we can uh, refer to them in, in the future. Okay, let's go to uh, item number four, public comment on non-agenda items. The public is invited to speak on issues of general interest during the public comment period. Comments during this specific agenda item will be heard only. Uh, public comment shall be limited to two minutes per speaker unless modified by the chair. The chair may establish a maximum length of time <clears throat> excuse me, uh, for all public speakers as needed. <clears throat> Bless you. The, thank you. Uh, the public is requested to dial nine, star nine, if you're on the telephone, or raise your hand if you're on an uh, 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 electronic device computer. When you are prompted by the presiding officer to address the board on any non-agenda item before the board takes action on any item. Um, so, um, it, do we have any um, takers for um, like to make a comment on non-agenda items, public? I do not see any hands raised. Yeah, okay. All right, then we'll go ahead and move on to item number five, public mm -hmm. officials report. And uh, do, do we have any elected officials uh, or elected representatives? Uh, attending today? Uh, we have Octaviano uh, Rios uh, from Dunn. Okay. I think we have Augie. I thought I saw his name over there. I, it was, but it disappeared. Oh, okay. No, I'm here. Oh, I'm here. Where, where are you? Well, I'm here. <laughs> are you I in a phone number? Okay. Okay. So let's go with Octaviano. And then, uh, Augie, you, you, uh, you're you next. And we'll see if we have any other elected representative. So, Octaviano. Hello. I wonder we lost him. Uh, hold on, I may need to unmute him. Okay, go ahead. Octaviano. You should be able to, you're not muted. Oh. There you are. I I, un I muted myself on the laptop, sorry. <laughs> Will I ever learn? Uh, good evening, everybody. This is Octaviano Rios uh, with the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. Uh, first of all, my condolences uh, to you all for the passing of uh, Mr. Peter Burmeister. 
Um, and and thank you for sustaining that uh, that sense of humor. He also had it, but sometimes uh, with his accent, uh, I couldn't figure it out. Uh, but it was always a pleasure to talk to him about the quality of life in uh, in San Pedro. So my condolences to everybody in the community, and the family, and the board. Um, I want to keep my uh, report relatively short. I know that you have a few uh, items on your agenda that I'm not going to touch on, but um, I did want to uh, share uh, some dates here. Uh, there is a NC, the last NC candidate information session uh, will be held this Saturday, uh, March 13th mm -hmm. at nine in the morning. Uh, again, that will be the last one. So if you have any uh, candidates that are kind of on the fence uh, or folks that are seasoned but uh, want to get more information um, about running a, a successful uh, campaign, now this is definitely the, the place to go. Or someone that's not even running that may want to consider filling a vacant seat in the future, uh, this would be another uh, good session for them to, to step in and, and listen to how to advocate for issues. Um, how to connect with voters and running a successful campaign in general. So I encourage everybody to attend uh, who haven't already. Um, there are also some uh, funding uh, trainings coming up. Uh, one is tomorrow at 2 p.m. Uh, this is for financial officers. Uh, the one after March uh, 9th uh, is uh, March 23rd at 6 p.m. And for those that are interested in, in finding out uh, the funding division's uh, role with community events, uh, they are holding a special workshop on Thursday, March 18th at 6 p.m. in the evening. Uh, let's see here. Uh, advocating for continuing virtual meetings. Uh, we are uh, well into this pandemic. Uh, we all thought that we were uh, going to be done with it uh, a few months into it, and obviously we haven't. Um, and uh, you know, bless everybody who's stepped in and provided leadership, as well as you all as a board in, in having virtual meetings. Um, it, it's obviously bringing the community together and, and continuing your your influence in city government and making sure that your needs are met. Uh, you know, in the future, uh, who knows if uh, this virtual environment will exist, uh, but in talking with our general manager, you know, if, if you feel that this, uh, this tool, whether it's Zoom or some other tool uh, uh, online uh, and, and using it to, to have online meetings is useful, you'd like to see it stay permanently, uh, we're asking you all to share your feedback, share your feedback to your commission. commission. Of course, you have your commissioner as, as your chair, um, which not a lot of neighborhood councils have that privilege, uh, but it, it'd be nice to um, have our neighborhood councils share their feelings about how convenient or not uh, uh, virtual uh, meetings are, um, whether you wanna have them uh, as an option or as a hybrid or as a permanent uh, only option to, to meeting. Uh, let your voices be heard. Uh, obviously this is an ongoing, um, uh, uh, thing to advocate for. So I uh, just wanted to uh, plant that seed in your, in your head. Uh, and then uh, if you haven't heard the news uh, in terms of uh, promotion, outreach and engagement, uh, Facebook and Instagram on more, March 4th, uh, 4th, excuse me, lifted their ban uh, for paid political ads. So uh, you can now purchase uh, ads to promote uh, your elections. Uh, whereas, uh, in November uh, and beyond, uh, you weren't able to. So uh, just wanted to make a note of that. Uh, that's probably newer news that I don't think made it to your NC profiles. Um, oh, another thing to highlight in your NC profiles is if you're uh, looking to host a candidate town hall, uh, we have a few tips, but also of some requirements that you just want to revisit uh, to make sure that you're in compliance with how you're organizing uh, your your candidate forums. And of course, we're, we're here, um, as well as the city attorney's office, if you have any uh, doubts, questions, or if you'd like to uh, review uh, just the general format, your plan uh, with us, uh, we're available. That concludes my report, folks. Uh, hopefully short and sweet. <laughs> All right, thank you, Octaviano. Any questions for uh, Octaviano? Okay. Uh, I have a question. Okay, I saw Diana's hand up first and then, uh, uh, Cynthia, you'll be next. Okay. 
Caviano, this is a follow up to the question I asked last month. And the question was whether or not how we would get a hold of the email addresses that, are, that as people sign in as participants, they um, need to enter their email addresses and how we get that from the Zoom meeting. You know, let me follow up on that. I have not gotten a response back. Um, so there was a little bit of a, a change uh, with staffing uh, with our EVG uh, support team. So let me uh, let me find out and circle back. Uh, so on behalf of the department, our apologies for the delay and in, in getting a response back, uh, Diana. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Cynthia, you're next. And then uh, Chris, you'll be after Cynthia. Taviano, I was wondering um, how long the city or county um, is going to be keeping the Zoom meetings going. Do we have any maybe date in the future when we can go back to our regular meetings? No, um, you broke up a little bit, but I, I got the gist of your, of your question. Uh, we haven't gotten a date um, as to how long we can keep going. Uh, you know, I, I would imagine that as long as the restrictions are in place to, right. to uh, meet, uh, we're going to have this tool available for us. Uh, and but I'm not sure what what you know how much time uh, when those restrictions are lifted um, do we have uh, okay. to to meet uh, virtually. Um, I would imagine there's a there's some uh, there would be some some uh, grace period there to to be able to collect ourselves and organize ourselves because of the need to reach out to a physical location and coordinate uh, and the funding okay. aspect of it. So a lot All to right. think about. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Chris, you're up next. Mute, uh, unmute yourself. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, uh, uh, as uh, as far as online meetings and uh, that are concerned, I guess I just wanted to weigh in. It's more of a comment. Uh, I think it should be, uh, I think a hybrid model going forward, um, considering we've already sort of proven the theory that these things can work, um, just broadens our reach. It, it's greater access altogether. I mean, we know that for the most part, the infrastructure exists. I, for instance, at Peck Park, I don't know that we have I mean, we may not have the hardware and the uh, IT infrastructure to um, uh, to netcast from there the way we have uh, been from home. But I think it's something that should be explored, and you know, it's possibly some uh, support for equipping neighborhood councils that want to pursue that. It just seems like something that would be more useful altogether. Thank, Thank you, Chris. Chris. Um, I do not see any other hands raised. So with that said, and I don't see anything from the attendees. So Octaviano, thank you very much for the report. Uh, it is truly appreciated that you were very concise and to the point. And uh, we all thank you for that. All right, thank you all. Have a good night. I'll be here for the remainder of the meeting. All right, great, thank you. Uh, Augie, you're up next. Hi, good evening, everyone. Augie Bez Milinovich from the Port of Los Angeles. Uh, next Board of Harbor Commission meetings are Thursday, March 18th, followed by a meeting on Thursday, April 1st, both <laughs> meetings at 9 a.m. Both meetings will be via video conference and meetings can be seen by going to the Port of Los Angeles website at www portoflosangeles.org. Uh, you can click on the commission tab and follow by the view agendas and video button right there. Community investment grants. The Port of Los Angeles is accepting applications for its community investment grant program, which annually, annually distributes up to 1 million per year in funding for initiatives, programs, and events benefiting the Los Angeles Harbor community. Um, Completed applications are due Monday, May 10th, uh, 2021 by 4 p.m. And due to the COVID gathering restrictions this year, an applicant informational workshop will be held virtually via Zoom at 6 p.m. on Thursday, April 1st. Interested organizations can join the meeting um, 
uh, there'll be a Zoom link provided. You could go to our website and pick that up. Uh, to apply, the organizations must have a 501c3 nonprofit status. Um, let's see. Waterfront update. A lot of progress has been made with the Promenade and Town Square project. Southern end to be done by the end of the month and the rest to be done by the end of July. Uh, there's a video going around where Commissioner Perosi uh, came out and showed the progress. I'm wondering if anyone saw it, caught it on Facebook, but if not, you could go to our website, www.portoflosangeles.org and check out the video. Birth 44 Shipyard Project has made uh, uh, substantial progress by having a signed term, term sheet and agreement on an environmental uh, and reimbursement, the project is expected to cost between 20 and 25 million on three to four acres of land. Trainee's Dockside Restaurant at the Old Kennedy site, uh, the lease was approved by the Board of Harbor Commission commissioners uh, last meeting. Um, the new trainees will have um, 4,448 square feet of inside dining space along with 11,025 or 1,100, 1,125 square feet of outside patio space. Virtual Lunar New Year's 2021, the Port of Los Angeles hosted a virtual Lunar New Year's festival in celebration of the year of the metal ox. So our seventh annual Lunar New Year celebration can be seen by going to the port's website, www.lawaterfront.org. And the, that's the LA Waterfront website. And uh, road closure, we're anticipating an upcoming road closure at uh, Harbor Boulevard at 6th Street. It'll be most likely closed at 6 p.m. and re reopened at 6 a.m. the following day. Um, and I'll let you know exactly uh, when and for how long as soon as I find out. And that concludes my report, unless there's any questions. Yeah, Augie, if I can, I'll jump in real quick. Um, could you say a little bit about the Front Street uh, project that will be commencing soon, a little bit? Front Street beautification project? Yeah. So, uh, yes, of course I could. Uh, that's going to, I think it's going to start uh, sometime at the end of this year. I can't remember the dates offhand, but I have them written down somewhere. Uh, Front Street is the street, if you head north on Harbor Boulevard, and as soon as you cross the Vincent Thomas Bridge, it becomes Front Street. The front street goes from there all the way to Pacific Avenue. Left side is Knoll Hill. The right side is China Shipping. Uh, at one time, we were going to incorporate that project with the on, on and off ramp project that we're doing at, at, uh, uh, for the SR-47 and the I-110 project. Uh, we found out that that project is gonna take, take longer to get done. So we broke out the Front Street Beautification Project and uh, we're gonna be able to do a lot of it and then uh, follow up. And as soon as we're done with the Front Street Beautification Project, uh, that SR-47 I-110 project should start construction to complete the rest of Front Street. Basically, you're gonna have a walking, a multi-purpose path uh, around um, China Shipping. You could ride your bikes, you could walk there. And uh, also make improvements at the uh, lots, different corner lots at the end of Pacific and uh, Front Street, and also um, have a connection to the uh, waterfront on fr Front Street, which is good because we're also doing the North Gaffney Beautification Project Phase Two, uh, which will also connect up to Front Street and Pacific Avenue. So basically, you could walk from Home Depot. You know that area on uh, North Gaffey Street, and be able to walk all the way down to to our waterfront on a beautiful landscape, you know, type of promenade area. Thank you, Abby. You're uh, welcome. We have a couple questions. Um, I think I saw Gwen's hand up first, and then uh, we'll go to Lori. Gwen, you want to? Yes. Yeah. A question. Hi, Augie. Uh, I just recently heard that the St. Thomas Bridge, uh, there's some um, foundation work that is going to delay the uh, 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 refurbishment of it. And I was wondering if that's going to impact any of the Front Street uh, um, development or any of the development near there. 
Um, it, it's actually extended the uh, uh, restoration and, and cleanup of the, the bridge to another two years. So uh, maybe even three, I think it was 2025. But, you're making um, you're making me laugh because you called it the Saint Vincent Thomas, and that's a common <laughs> mistake. And Vincent saint. Thomas was no saint, even though he was a very nice <laughs> man Vincent, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Former, <laughs> former <laughs> assembly member, um, <laughs> Croatian descent from from Biloxi, Mississippi, I believe, was his original area, and very nice guy. Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, you're probably referring from, uh, to Donna Littlejohn's article that was in the breeze recently. And no, that's not going to uh, affect uh, our Front Street beautification. Actually, it kind of benefited us because we decided to break off the Front Street project. We were going to uh, wrap it up in one. So the Front, Bre Front Street beautification project is actually going to start a little sooner. And uh, like I said, as soon as that project is finished construction, um, the project that you're referring to will uh, go into construction and finish the rest of Front Street. So it's, it's good timing. And basically we had a geologist go out there and, you know, geologists, I mean, I, I, they, they take soil samples and things like that. And they found that the soil, I, I don't know, it's engineering geology stuff, but we, we need to do a little bit more uh, work there before we could uh, go ahead and uh, proceed with the project. Sorry, Augie. Uh, sorry, Lori. Just one more, one more question uh, regarding the job. Uh, Gwen, hey, Gwen, can we go to the next question? We want to try to get as many as we can. And Lori had her hand up, so um, Lori, you want to go ahead and ask your question? Okay. Well, it wasn't so much of a question for Augie. I really um, appreciate the updates you send to us. So just to let you know, the outreach team, we we look through whatever you send us, um, and we share events and activities on our weekly e-newsletter. I don't know if you subscribe to it, but it's very in-depth and on social media, as well as every time you post something from Gene Soroka, we share the video on there. And this message is more too for all of our board members and attendees listening that um, we do try to uh, make sure that everybody knows what's going on out there. Um, I was just wondering, do you know um, what the status of Fleet Week? Is it going to be virtual? Have they made any official decisions um not yet it's not going to happen memorial day because they were talking about changing it to memorial day and uh if it does happen this year it'll be at labor day and i'm assuming that i'm assuming right now that if it doesn't happen it'll be virtual but right now they're still working with the navy to see if we can do it in labor day okay just keep us posted thank you augie absolutely all right thanks uh looks like i see John DeMaleo's hand just came up. John, you want to go ahead? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hi, Augie. Hi, Lauren. Hi, John. Um, I wanted to ask you, who controls the fixing or the lighting on the bridge? The street lights are most of the time off. Uh, yeah, that's, just, John, that's a, that's a Caltrans br bridge. So you need to get a hold of Caltrans or your state assembly members rep or something like that. But it, it's a Caltrans bridge, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah, you. you're welcome. Okay, I don't know if I see another hand coming. Gwen, okay, ask your question. Thank you. Uh, Augie, I, I know that Knoll Hill is, is pretty much no longer a dog park. Is there any, any, uh, opportunity to make it uh, dog friendly or find another dog friendly space within any of the development. Uh, I, 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 I'm heartened to hear about the uh, continuation of the walkway from Home Depot all the way down, but um, if you could comment on that. Yeah, I'll comment on it. Um, so on port property, as you know, you know, we're restricted by state Thailand rules and we, we did allow a temporary dog park at the site. Um, we're not in the dog park business, you know, the Port of Los Angeles, but uh, thank goodness I did see something recently. I believe that Joan Milky Flores Park over at by Paseo del Mar, I think that's up for consideration for a dog park. So uh, through the council office, I believe I saw that recently. And then there's a I live pretty close. Uh, there's a beautiful dog park. I know it's not uh, essentially in the city of uh, uh, San Pedro, but um, Eastview Park over here uh, off of Westmont and um, 
uh, just just below uh, Western Avenue. They have a wonderful dog park, both for large and small dogs. And uh, I go there all the time. And I really believe that they made that dog park to keep my dog Rocco on the other side of the fence because he he's about 16 pounds of terror. And um, I believe they kept all the other dogs in the dog park while Rocco comes and growls and barks at them all. But uh, yeah, no, uh, uh, I think that's that's uh, essentially what's going on with the dog parks. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, th this next question will be the last so we can move on with the agenda. Uh, Dan, you wanna go ahead and ask your question? You're muted. Yes, um, actually it's a comment and it's gonna come back to Gwen. There, there is another proposed dog park and that's um, the council office is working on doing a dog park in the Caltrans Triangle there at the end of the 110 freeway. Oh. Good. Thank you. Good to know. Uh, looks like we have a question from uh, from an attendee and it looks like it's Dan Dixon. Dan, are you an attendee? <laughs> Do you want to be moved over? I moved him. Did you? Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Did you have a question or are you just drawing? No, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm glad to finally be here. Okay, thanks, Dan. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Um, Augie, thank you so much for being here tonight. And thank you for the update. Appreciate it. All right. Good night, everyone. Have a wonderful meeting. Good night. Uh, okay. Uh, budget representatives, Melanie and or Lori, any, any uh, budget uh, rep information? I don't hear. Did I we hear um, did the report? Stuff. Did you post the report? No. Oh, neither did I. Um, we'll do it next meeting. There's a report or long report that came in and it doesn't really pertain to anything to do with our area. It's just kind of what's going on with the budget advocates. Um, we'll post it at the next meeting and go over it. Well, in the meantime, let me ask you, can it be posted someplace so that people can yeah, review it? Yeah, we can post it on the website. Okay, great. All right, uh, next item, budget advocate. Do we have anything from the budget advocates? No, that's what it was, that's, was budget it? advocate okay. report. Oh. Real good. Okay, we have no uh, presentations to- uh... Actually, if, you, if I may, real quick. Okay. Who is who is who are we talking to? This is a. Uh, my name is Sergeant Scott Gaines, Los Angeles Port Police. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry, I missed public safety. I'm no. so sorry. That's that's my that's my I, fault. I thought this was going to go under um, first responders. Oh, that's next, right? Okay. I, can wait. I didn't forget but, you, but Scott. I, I, I kind of jumped the gun and I said no presentations. So I yes, know. no, Scott, I did not forget you. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, now we're on first responders. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, well, greetings, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Scott Gaines. I'm a sergeant with the Port Police Community Resource Unit, uh, formerly known as the Crows. I just wanted to give you a brief uh, rundown of some of the crimes that's been going on, mostly all over San Pedro, but let you know that for the Port Police territory, the violent crimes have been down 67%. The property crimes have also been down 22%, thus making total crimes down 28%. Um, all around crime has been down. The one thing that has been up is motor vehicle thefts. Mostly the motor vehicle thefts haven't been stolen in San Pedro. However, they are, a lot of the vehicles have been found around San Pedro. Some of them have been in the area of the Northwestern area, uh, primarily around where Target would be, and then closer to the central San Pedro along Sepulveda and the Pacific area. Uh, we've recovered, let me see if I can find that. It's been up 91%. Uh, we have a 91% increase of motor vehicle theft with uh, seven, in this month, in the last, in this last three months alone. So that was up to, compared to the 
none of last year and then a gradual uptick of uh, 20 of 23 percent. So and then there's been lots of been some burglaries from thefts, but mostly it's been in the ports of call village area. But that's pretty much of the property crimes outside of uh, motor vehicles. Basic crime has been down in the area. That's pretty well, much all great, I have. Great news. Thank you, Scott, for that. No problem. Sir. And again, my apologies for kind of just jumping over that was purely unintentional. Oh, not a problem. Uh, and I also know that we have our uh, Ray. Just, just one quick question. What, yeah. Scott, were you, were you planning to come to our meeting each month? I will be planning to have either I will be coming or I'll be sending one of the people that are underneath me, one of the crows. Okay, great. We look forward to seeing you and nice to meet you tonight. Thank you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, let me see. It looks like we have Dan Brown, our uh, senior lead for our area. Dan? Are you muted? Do you want me to move him over? Yeah, can you move him over? I probably can. Let's see here. Um, oh, Dan Dixon got <laughs> He's back again. Um, let's see. There we go, Dan Brown. I'm looking the wrong Dan. OK, Dan, should, Dan Brown should now be a panelist. All right. Uh, we now we're in business. Can you guys hear me okay? We got you. Go ahead. Oh, good deal. Good deal. Um, yeah, thank you guys, everybody. This is uh, Officer Dan Brown, the slow for the Northwest San Pedro area. Glad to be with you tonight. I just wanted to say a quick word on, on Pete because I know a lot's been said tonight and I'll make it brief, but um, Augie just reminded me, you know, they're talking about the Front Street Beautification Project and we already have that really nice uh, walkway along Gaffey Street um, across from Target and Home Depot. Um, that area over there. But if you'll remember a couple of years ago, that had been the not exactly the park area, but the, the I guess the watershed area just beyond the railroad tracks there had been almost completely overrun with about 15 to 18 transients with a very dense encampment, tons of motor vehicle parts and bike parts and tents and just all kinds of debris and wood pallets and all kinds of things. And it was really getting out of hand. There were a lot of narcotics use and sales going on there um, and, and even some, some weapons violations things that, um, you know, that the people that were living there were involved in. I remember Pete had reported on the fact that, what's that? I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. You're fine. Oh, I, thought I, I thought I had gotten muted. Um, but anyway, Pete had reported that you know, a homeless person had even pulled a knife and threatened him there. And he was very instrumental in putting a lot of pressure on the on us, on me personally, our, um, our division, our, our department at getting that cleaned up. And he even came to uh, one of the CPAB meetings and, and got our captain's ear at the time, Captain McManus, and let him know what a problem it was. And really it was, but it wasn't something I could really handle on my own just because of the sheer numbers over there. But um, with his persistence, I was able to get the resources that we needed to get enough officers over there to get that cleaned up. And it took a little bit of time, but it's, it's, it's a marked improvement from what it was. In fact, there are no, no more encampments over there to this day. Every once in a while, there's, there's some debris and activity over there, homeless activity, but it, it's much cleaner and it's a much more pleasant place to be along. So I just wanted to highlight that because he, he definitely was a positive impact and improved the quality of life in the community. So enough on that though, but as far as crime stats go for the broader area, which I cover, um, I wish I could say it's as rosy as it is on the port side. They're, they're seeing a bit of a decrease. Um, but in the Northwest San Pedro Neighborhood Council area, um, crime, crime is definitely up. Um, that being said, in my overall area, which as you all know, I'm sure if you've been on long enough and you've heard me talk, um, part of my area does cover the central San Pedro area. I am seeing about a 7% drop in overall crime. But if you just factor in the area that your neighborhood council district covers, it's up like 3%, but it's up huge in grand theft auto numbers, stolen cars, like Sergeant Gaines was speaking about, um, and, and burglaries. So last year we had two stolen cars in your council district area. This year there were seven for the month of February. So obviously that's a huge, huge increase 
And I've been touching on that the last few months because that has been a trend that we've been seeing um, the second half of 2020 and it's continuing into 2021 and it shows no signs of slowing down. We're definitely up huge in those numbers. Stolen cars, burglaries, uh, those kinds of crimes are definitely up. The one thing that I'm still seeing a big drop in, and this month was no different, and that is just the simple thefts, the plain old thefts, like unattended property thefts or shoplifting from stores. That's down pretty big. In your council district area, it's down 73%. In my overall area that I cover, it's down 64%. So a lot fewer of those are being reported. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of reports that are coming to me and I'll, I'll look for the report to try to get back to the citizen that has a question about it and I'm not finding reports for them. So I'm noticing it seems like the crime is moving west, if, if you will, at least moving more into your areas and, and um, maybe not being reported as much as it should be. So that's something that I could push out to the community. Make sure when you guys are seeing suspicious activity or you know, becoming aware of crimes that have happened, make sure they're getting reported because that is one way that our department uses to analyze where resources should go. And I definitely wanna make sure that Harbor area is getting its fair share of the resources that we have, because as you know, the city of LA experienced a large uptick in violent crime you know, across the city. And a lot of resources are going to other places to help address that, and rightfully so. But I just wanna make sure that, that you know, folks here in San Pedro and, and Harbor area aren't getting the short end of the stick there. So. Um, that being said, cat catalytic converter thefts continue. We had a few more of those this month, but again, the biggest um, problem we have right now are the stolen cars. That's that's the biggest increase that we have going on right now. Um, that pretty much concludes my report, and I'll make myself available for any questions as time okay. permits. All right, thank you for that. We have a couple of hands raised, but I, I'm gonna sneak in a question first if I can, Dan. Yeah. Um, Two things. Um, a, the right there on on um, uh, Park Western, right where it starts to curve west, uh, uh, where at, just right after the apartments. If you're coming from, uh, say, Gaffey toward Western, there's three cars that look like they were hit multiple times, and they're just they've just been sitting there for a, quite a while, and it, it, it now it appears that I'm noticing that someone is going by there and busting out windows from those uh, wrecked cars. So I'm, I'm noticing that on it got more of a, a, on a general basis, I'm noticing that I'm seeing a lot of glass on the asphalt as if perhaps maybe is there a problem with someone going around vandalizing cars uh, in that area? because um, it seems to be that I'm seeing more and more of it. And how can we do something to get rid of those cars? Because they, th th there was a white, I think it's a Nissan that was hit previously and it was just left there. And now there's two other cars that were hit right behind it and shoved it right up against that, that white Nissan. So- um, Yeah, sure, I can uh, touch on that. It, it's, so, kind of, it's kind of like that broken window thing, you know, if we just- okay. Just going to get worse that that's what i was going to say that's literally like the i think the dictionary definition of broke windows theory you know you see a smashed up car and if you don't do anything about it then more smashed up cars are gonna are, are gonna be there but um yeah i can speak to that if we're talking about where where diana had that sign put in that no dumping sign yeah. right around that area is that where you're talking it's the same place dan as yeah. the other cars okay. before so i know that right there there's one particular individual who makes his living or at least augments his income by buying salvaged cars and fixing them up and selling them and he tends to park his cars on the street i don't, I don't know that these are related to him but i can just say that that has been a problem in the past there before i have addressed that with him you're not really supposed to run that kind of business like that you're supposed to have a your own private property to store those kinds of vehicles. You're not supposed to use the public street to store your uh, vehicles for, for for fixing up and selling. Um, there's a DMV code for that. It's kind of not so easy to get them to enforce, but there's an easier way to, to address that. And that is through enforcing the registration laws. But as you guys know, over the past year, 
that has been eliminated from uh, my tool belt, if you will. I'm not, I wasn't permitted to impound unregistered cars for a very long time. Now that has been allowed to resume, there are, there are certain restrictions where I still cannot do it, but I am able to um, enforce that again. So it just comes down to me knowing about it. So I didn't, I don't, I didn't see those cars that you're describing, but I can tell you this, if you send me an email uh, with those, if you snap a picture from your phone and, or with just give me the license plate, or actually that's a pretty easy description. If it's got broken glass everywhere, I can go over there tomorrow and look for that, but I can mark those tires. Uh, I can go make contact with that guy and, and make sure he moves it or let him know that he's going to start getting his cars impounded again, because that did work the last time when I started impounding some of those cars, uh, he did kind of at least keep them moving so that they weren't in one spot and looking all terrible like that. So I'll, I'll address that tomorrow, but in the future for anybody that has an issue like this, um, yeah, you just send, send me a picture of the car and location and I'll take a look at it and see what I can do. Usually I can do something to fix it. That, that's great, uh, Dan. Thank you very much for that. And, and my next question, if I could real quickly, um, down the hill, down channel, you know, approaching a uh, gaffy that, that really odd stop sign there. Um, I noticed that there were two, one night there were two motor officers there, I guess, looking for people who uh, blow that, that stop sign. But that's a pretty constant thing that I've seen people just blow that stop sign all the time and there's been a couple of times when i thought there was going to be a horrible wreck there because they were just going anyway i just want to put that on your radar if something can be done about people blowing that stop sign or just taking it out altogether <laughs> yeah i don't that's, that stop sign hasn't but, always been there as you know yeah. there i don't know when they decided that was a good idea to put that in there um it's it's really tough because it's on a very very steep downgrade and it, it can be difficult to stop i've caught myself yeah. having to really apply the brakes hard to get to get yeah. a good stop there and it is a problem it's kind of an engineering problem you're right it's it's awkwardly placed and um, people tend to run it um yeah i don't i i mean it sounds like our South Traffic Division, who operates those motorcycle units, uh, sounds like they're aware of it, and that's why they're working it. Uh, I don't know if they got a specific community complaint. This is the first I've heard about it, but I mean, I know it's an issue. Everybody knows about it, mm -hmm. um, but it sounds like they're working it. But as far as from an engineering standpoint, I don't know how, how we would get that looked at as to the feasibility of getting it removed. Um, presumably, <laughs> they... And they did the analysis to get it put in for a reason. I just don't know what that is, to be quite honest with you. They did it for that little street that well, goes behind the... The alley thing? Yeah, yeah, the alley one. yeah that's when they put it up, when they put that it's alley not, in there. It used to be the an alley. The promise that Jan Khan made to, the, to that, some residents back there in that community. Hmm. <laughs> okay. But they were very split on that issue. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, so, though. It's a weird sign. So, so we have some hands up. So I'm going to go ahead and call on them. I'm going to call, call them in order that I see them on my screen here. So Diana, you're, you're first, and Melanie, you're next. Then I got Rock, and then uh, Gwen. So in that order. So go ahead, Diana. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you covered my first point, which was those three cars, which are back in the same place and suspect it's the same person. Um, but the second one is a question. Saturday morning, along about mm, 8, 30, 9 o'clock, there was an incident, um, a lot of sirens. I was told that it was a battery in progress someplace on um, the Capitol Drive area. Can you tell us what that was? Was it residential? Mm. Was it in a commercial area? It was a battery. Battery drive. It's at battery drive. Yeah. I, I don't know what call you're referring to. I can look it up Saturday at nine o'clock in the morning. I, I heard you say battery. I thought you said the type of call was a battery, like an assault that's against somebody. You're saying at battery street. Well, I was, what I was told, what I was told and what Melanie is saying are two different things. What I was told by the police officer from the port who was sitting um, in the parking lot of the parking ride, of the parking ride when we were doing a cleanup of that lot, um, that officer said it was a battery in progress and that it huh. was in the Capitol Drive area. 
Melanie oh. saying it was on Battery Street. So both may be true. Okay, yeah. I mean, I can look into it. If there was a call for service in that area at that time, I can find it and I can get back to you. I, I was off on Saturday, and so I, I and I didn't hear about it today when I came back. So uh, I'll find out though. A lot of sirens. Um, Melanie, you're next. Hi, Dan. Mm -hmm. Hi, um, Melanie. So, first thing is we've been having on Capitol Drive lately, and I don't know if you can um, have them start sit staging out a decoy vehicle or something again late at night um they are racing up and down capitol and people are hearing it all the way up to western at the apartments all the way up there because they start here at target and they just go through all the stop signs i mean fast and they race up and down capitol drive do you and have an approximate really time huh is it on the weekends or yeah. Weeknights too. It's like okay. at eleven thirty at night, midnight, okay. one in the morning, when nobody's around. But you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, I we've heard it where we'll be up late watching TV or going to bed. You know, in bed, and we can hear them like, you know, and they do the cookies in the middle of the intersection and all of that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, I will definitely send it out to my guys that work the graveyard shift. Um, see if they can spend a little more time between eleven and one in that area, um, but I haven't heard any specific reports about that, but it's not surprising because I was just talking to our street racing task force out of South Bureau traffic because they also monitor some of those um, car club rides that you guys have been maybe seen on Pacific. Um, usually it's like on a Friday night, but lately it's even been on Wednesday and Thursdays. It's just crazy. I've been talking to them about, about getting some help for those events because they just jam up traffic on Pacific around 10th street or so by the banks there. And um, they're going to help me out with that, but I'll let them know about okay. um, this issue as well, because they even told me they prefer to address the street racing more than the car clubs, because even though the car clubs are very annoying and they're a traffic issue, they don't usually result in yeah. the really awful accidents where people get maimed or killed. So um, the street the racing other, is definitely a priority. The other thing is, um, I don't know, hopefully the people reported it, but they're on Amelia here last week and then also two on bloomwood were catalytic converters cut out mm -hmm. yeah like i said those have been still a constant thorn in my side as far as you know constantly being reported here there was three in the month of february i don't know how many there have been so all, far in march. All last week so you're saying these are in march yeah um yeah, i don't have any details was, on that. Um, one of our block captains Oh, wow. Okay, let's uh, let's move on to right. Rock. Hi, Dan. Thank you for everything you do. I really appreciate it. Um, Hi, and I sort of hate to ask this type of stuff, but it is feedback, especially when you're going through budget stuff and all that kind of business. But you know where I am, and I virtually had a guy Friday evening, like at 6 o'clock, almost run me over blowing through that stop sign. It was absolutely ridiculous. I just wanted you to comment, even coming back from Western, by the way, a catalytic converter got stolen out of our parking lot at Trader Joe's where we are. Um, so even in there, you get a problem. But the, the general thing, even coming down Western, people pull out in front of that. I mean, the general way of people driving now has just deteriorated. Can you comment on that at all? I really don't even know what to say other than I agree with you 100%. Sometimes I'm driving to work um, on Pacific and, um, you know, I'm going the speed limit 35 miles an hour or something like that. I feel like it's a reasonable speed um, and I'll have people literally, you know, they reduce Pacific down to one lane in all directions now. I mean, each way where it used to be two. So when I'm driving 35 and somebody wants to go 55, there's no real way for them to do it unless they go into oncoming traffic, which it seems is they're all too willing to do. Cause I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody just blow through like that middle left turn lane or on, you know, on the wrong side of the road to just go around me. I think it's just a cultural problem that we have, you know, I think unfortunately right now people are kind of selfish, you know, I mean, that uh, shouldn't be too controversial to say that we, we're a pretty selfish society. And I think people want to get where they're going right now and they don't want anything in their way. And, 
it's reasonable to them when they do it. I think when we tend to, to do things that aren't exactly the right choice, I think we tend to justify it to ourselves for some reason, but then when other people do it, you know, it doesn't, you know, we're all too quick to, to judge them for that. So I don't know. I think it's just where we are. And Dan, when you're out there, remember I drive a black Yukon and a red Mini Cooper. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Gwen. You will ask the last question. I don't see any other hands up after that. Go ahead, Gwen. Hi. Hi, Dan. Um, could you please uh, uh, give the public your email one more time for reporting abandoned vehicles and things like that, as well as um, uh, when you were talking about the cleanup, were you talking about the uh, rail railway area over by the Gaffey Street Park uh, that's in between uh, the freeway and the park? Is that where the cleanup occurred? Or... Yeah, you're talking about the, the thing with Pete, right? Yes. Yeah, that was uh, August of 2019 where the actual cleanup took place. But there was a uh, task force that harbor officers conducted in about, I don't know, April or March or something, uh, a little bit before the cleanup to arrest about a dozen or more violators that had committed various crimes over in that area. And then it was months of postings and you know city requirements before we could uh, get the, the cleanup approved. And then it was a two or three day affair to get all the debris removed from there. But yeah, that's the area I'm talking about. Yeah, we're still having, we're still experiencing issues there. So nothing like that, but. Um... Yeah, I mean, I just drove by there today. There's no encampments, there's no like, tents where they used to be I, like I said there's still homeless people that use that walkway that green space and there's really nothing I can do to prevent them from doing so they're allowed to lay down on any public sidewalk and sleep but as far as setting up permanent fixture on that um, that space where they were at before um, it's definitely nothing like what it was for sure thank you sir but, but you had what was your other question the first one I forgot it already you oh, uh, your, your email, your email. Oh, yeah, yeah. Public. oh, I was going to talk about that. So technically my email is not to report abandoned cars because um, there was a time where I was getting so many of those that <laughs> tons and tons of my time could, because it takes me a good like hour and 20 minutes probably to just do one car removal. By the time I get there, request a tow truck, the tow truck arrives, takes it away. And then I do my report. It's, it's a good hour to hour and a half easy for every car. So I, I, if I was doing a few of those a day, that'd be literally all I, I would do. But when there's a, a constant problem or there's a, a particular area where kind of like Ray was saying, the broken windows theory there, that those areas exist where people just kind of like dump, sal you know, old salvaged cars or something. I don't know what it is. I don't know if they get the insurance payout for the car and they just don't want the car anymore. And it costs more money to junk it than to just leave it on the street. But there's well, areas where they just get dumped, it seems like. Well, I have a dumped vehicle that's been there for a year and it's been vandalized and it's a mess. Yeah, no, no, definitely I'll help you. I out. have one too. <laughs> I'll, I'll give my email address, but I, I just wanted to make that distinction clear that for general abandoned car reporting, where you see a car that's got cobwebs and dust on it, um, you want to call 1 800 abandoned. But um, if you guys are having community problems or a car that's been there for a year, you know, I know that the, the LA DOT takes a long time sometimes to address that. So my email is 38616 at lapd.online. So it's my serial number, my employee serial number, 38616 at lapd.online. And you can send any kind of inquiry to me there. Okay, we have one more hand up. Well, this will be the last. John DeMeglio, go ahead and ask your question. Hey, Dan. Um, Hi, I'm part of that car culture that you're talking about mm -hmm. on, on uh, Pacific and um, um, it, San Pedro has always had a big car culture and these car cultures are coming from other cities and towns that used to be gang type car cultures and they're not anymore. It's all the communities getting together um, peacefully all the gang clubs and all the clubs are turning into regular clubs and they're really doing a peaceful cruise out there. And, and, and I'm 
and there are a lot of idiots out there too. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying there isn't. And and us in the car culture don't like that either. And right. we like we like it. We I I I like it patrolled, you know, and that and that and yeah. you know. Actually, can we uh, talk about this more? Because you actually did come to my mind because I had recently gotten some community complaints about some recent um, some, some of those recent cruises on Pacific and you yes. had come to my mind and I didn't really remember it until now, but I remember I spoke to you and you, you told me how you had a classic car. Can you send me an email and just give me your phone number and I can touch base with you maybe tomorrow yeah. so we can talk a little bit more about this because I had something fun to run by you. Do you have something to write right now? Yeah. Oh, 310, 310. Mm -hmm. 283 3494. Okay, I'll give you a call tomorrow. Okay, John? Yeah, I, I'd like to be involved in that. Yeah. Uh, uh, right now, this time in, with COVID and everything, the people are not doing car shows and whatnot. So they're getting out yeah, to all these cruises, uh, you know, and they're, and, they're, and they're growing up all over the cities. Uh, not mm -hmm. only here, Huntington Beach, all over the areas. And, you know, and, and, and us in the car cultures and, and my cars included don't want to get damaged by some of these kooks that are out there that are drinking or, or what they're doing and whatnot, not playing by the rules. There are rules in the car cultures, you know, and there's some of these guys that break the rules. And I, 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 I'd like to talk to you about that. Yeah, let's t I'll talk about it tomorrow. Sure. I'll give you a call. All well, right. Thank sounds you. good. Thank you. All right, Dan, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Scott, if you're still here, thank you for your time. Uh, really appreciate you guys uh, coming out and, and uh, appreciate the work that you do out there in the street. So uh, please take care and uh, we'll see you again real quick. Excellent. Thank you. And you're all welcome. And, uh, and good night. Good night. Okay, uh, we're going to move on to the next uh, item, and that's, uh, well, we have no presentations. I, I was, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm getting, isn't there a CPAP uh, or uh, you're muted, Melanie. I see your mouth moving. Melanie, you're muted. Okay. There we go. Um, yes, there's a CPAP report. It was on the website. Okay. Is there uh, any... Anything of highlight that you want, like maybe um, one item to highlight? If not, don't worry. We'll we'll read it on the pull it up here. I've got... You need me to share the screen with that, or everybody should have looked at it already. What's the deal? Well, usually we share the screen. The CPAB. All right. Yeah. Let me see if I can find it for you. Can we, uh, Melanie, can you just make a statement about something yeah. that's uh, to highlight and then we can What's have the people refer to it? Said that it basically CPAB focused a lot on homelessness um, this last time. And um, to date, they said there's 1,400 homeless with 50% living in the streets and 50% living in vehicles in CD15. They're trying to create enough housing of various types to meet 1400 is the magic number. Okay. Um, so what they said was basically that if they get to that magic number 1400, then they can enforce places like the Gulch, places that they're all over on the sidewalk and all that and be able to enforce the 5611 that they would be able to do it because we would have the capacity to house all the homeless that's in our district mm -hmm. um there are 75 tiny homes that are going to be built at harbor college in may 2021 the project room key at um, that was over on Harbor Boulevard at the Best Western there that's gone because they have to have a bunch of repairs and stuff. So it will be no longer part of any program. Um, but they did acquire the Travel Lodge and Harbor Gateway and the Har Har Motel 6 in Harbor City. Um, the navigation site is completely full is what they said with storage. And um, 
Yeah. So they said if they got all of what they're planning to do with the pallet shelters for the tiny homes and everything and the hotels, it'd be 1,183 places for homeless. So we'd still fall short of the 1,400. Okay. And that's it. All right. That was a lot of the meeting. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the feedback. Uh, so uh, we'll move on to the next uh, piece, which no presentations, as I've said multiple times, I guess I'm just too happy we don't have any presentations. So, uh, so let's go to the consent calendar. It looks like we have just one item on the consent calendar, and that's to approve the uh, February uh, stakeholder meeting minutes. Uh, do I hear an objection to uh, just go ahead to use it on consent calendar? No objection. Uh, can I get a motion from somebody? I'll move. Mary motions. Mary. Second. Mary motions. And who seconded? Melanie. Melanie. Any discussion? No discussion. Uh, Christian, would you like to take uh, the uh, vote count? Yes, I will, Mr. Chair. Rock Ashfield. Abstain, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Okay, Armando. Armando. I'm sorry, what did you vote, Armando? Yes. Okay, thank you. John B. Yes. Mary. Aye. Adrianita. Yes. Ron. Yes. John D. Yes. Dan. Yes. Cynthia. Yes. Gwen. Yes. Laurie. Yes. Jan. Yes. Melanie. Yes. Kelly. Yes. Alec. Yes. Ray. Yes. Chris. Yes. Okay, it passes with one abstention. Great, thank you. Uh, I'm going to kind of combine real quick uh, the uh, Hank and Bonk uh, report real quick. Um, in Bonk, we had uh, one topic that was really uh, it took a it took a lot of conversation, and I'll cover that real quick. Uh, but first, let me say that uh, in our public uh, non-agenda item public comment time, we're having uh, people comment on the fact that um, there are grievances that are being filed, but that are not being addressed uh, in a timely manner. Uh, there's also been some concern voiced about uh, bullying and also the use of language in some of our uh, some neighborhood council meetings. Um, and then there was a comment that spoke to the fact that Bonk has over time taken public comment and um, we are the, the community is not able to see what it is that people are saying about a particular item. For instance, uh, I'll use the digital media uh, policy draft that is currently being considered. Using that as the example, people over uh, time and in two uh, public meetings, people are making comments about it. They're writing uh, 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 opinions and uh, sending letters to, to both Dunn and Bonk about it. So if someone wants to go back and take a look at what people are saying about this, there's no real easy place to find it over time. You know, you might have to 
third child of each actual meeting to be able to hear what people are saying or whatever. So there's a real um, concern that there should be a mechanism in, a, in place so that uh, individuals, community, uh, uh, neighborhood council members could actually go and search various items, whether it be a CIS, a letter, comments or things like that so that it, uh, people can see how, what people are saying. And so that we can also go back as, as um, commissioners and get a taste of just how many people are falling on the, uh, this particular issue or not. Uh, so it, there is some real concern about being able to reflect that over time. So um, there is there is a recognition that a that there is a need for that, and there they will start looking at options. But I I found out that there's actual uh, actual um, uh, uh, applications that can be uh, used to uh, record all these this information but it doesn't come without a price it's quite uh expensive so there may be a uh a way to do it in other methods um uh, until they're able to actually get this application in place so um in speaking to the digital media policy that was also discussed both at hank and in, at bonk um What's going to happen is that they are going to uh, take uh, a list of everything that has been said over the uh, many months that uh, people have commented on that, and they are drafting another um, uh, version of the policy, and they will uh, publish it before anyone is being asked to vote on it at the commissioners. So everyone will have an opportunity to see what that new uh, draft uh, will look like. And um, as I understand it, we'll have an opportunity for those who, who want to make comment about it. And uh, then ultimately at, at some point in the near future, they're gonna ask the commissioners to vote on it. So that in a nutshell is what has been uh, happening, what has happened this past month uh, at Bonk and it was also covered and discussed in uh, at Hank at the same time. That's the main crux of the uh, of the the concern at this time at both locations. So, um, if anyone wants to ask me a question about any about anything about uh, that particular subject, I'd be happy to answer it to the best of my ability. But there's more to come, basically, when it comes down to that digital policy, which has drawn a lot of comment from people from on various sides of the issue. And I don't see any hands going up. Oh, I, I oh, there it is. You know, your, your, um, the uh, color of your hand is very hard to see in your background, Lori. So sorry about that. So go ahead. I don't have it. I don't know why my hand is brown and other people's come up yellow. I have no say on that. So anyway, thank you, Commissioner Regalado. I just want to add to that because what when we file community impact statements, whether it be on a council file or anything else, I think the importance of it is we're not just sending the message to the group, the city council or a, or a committee. We're also sharing that information with our other neighborhood councils. Um, I don't know about anybody else, but if I'm interested in a particular council file, I'm gonna look at what public comments and what other neighborhood councils have stated on it. It gives me a nice overview, sometimes a perspective that we haven't thought of before. So I found this extremely disappointing um, uh, that the Department of Neighbor Empowerment didn't say anything about the fact that there's no way to share this information. Um, I, I felt the lack of transparency um, just unacceptable. And uh, honestly, th they're saying it costs like $35,000 to get the mechanism needed to put this in there. They could have just on their own website allowed these to be posted. 
because they have a section on their website for Board of Neighborhood Commissioners. So I'm just voicing, um, you know already, Mr. Regalado, but everybody else needs to understand that this lack of transparency and sharing information does affect things. We all should be sharing information. It helps us weigh in and evaluate topics. So I hope that sooner than later, they will address this. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your comment. Um, so uh, if, if it's okay, we'll go ahead and move on to the next uh, agenda item and that's committee reports. Um, what I'm going to do is that um, I've been requested if we could move one of our reports up to the top of this section and I uh, would be more than happy to do it. Uh, Diana, planning and land use, would you wanna go ahead and, uh, and give your report? I know you took your shot today and you may be feeling a little bit under the weather, so. It's, it's your turn. Thank you. Um, actually, I'd like to start with the bylaws and election committee report. Absolutely, whatever whatever works for you. And then do the planning and land use. Um, with regard to the elections, candidate applications are now being accepted for the board. The last day to apply is March 30th, and all of the documentation to be a board member is due April 2nd. So I would strongly urge you not to wait till the last minute in case there's a problem with the documentation you submit. The best way to file is online. However, there are also paper applications available at the mail room at 1805 South Gaffey. The paper applications are confused, confusing, so it is far preferable to file online. Um, as Octaviano said, there's only one more um, candidate information session, and that's the one this Saturday and there's information on, on our website if someone needs it. As of today, the city has received four applications for the 16 seats on our board. There was one application for the at-large seat, one for the Averill area, one for the taper area, and one for the non-governmental organization. The strength of this board lies in its members, and I would encourage you to think about who you would like to serve on the board and to reach out and encourage, and encourage them to apply. As for the voting this year, remember that that's going to require pre-registration. An online voter registration begins April 16th and ends June 8th. If you don't want to wait for the online portal to open, you can actually go online now and download the registration form. And then if you download it, you complete it and you have to mail it back in, but you, you can certainly do that. Voting itself opens May 17th and ends June 15th. And there's been a couple of, of changes regarding balloting. So ballots can be returned by mail or they can be deposited in the drop box in Peck Park. And the first change is that the ballot box at Peck Park is actually going to be open for five days. Um, for, yeah, five days. It's going to open on uh, Friday, June 11th at nine in the morning. They'll open it and then they'll close it on Tuesday the 15th at 8 p.m. So there's a, several days in which you can put your ballot in the box. If you mail the ballot, there's also been a change. Um, all ballots still must be postmarked by June 15th, but they've realized that giving three days to receive something in the mail is just not realistic today. And so now they've said that they have to be received by um, June 25th. So that's, that's a big change. Any questions on the elections? If not, I'll move on to planning. Um, what do you want me, do you want me to put the Iowa, um, what do you want me to put on the screen? Ms. The Mayor? diagram for the Iowa or okay. the letter, I guess the diagram. Me, okay, let me see if I can find it. Okay. the diagram first. Um, so we have two action items, the first of which relates to the USS Iowa. The Battleship Iowa is applying to the state for funds to develop a park and community center adjacent to the ship. It's a competitive grant process and they've asked us for a letter of support. The uh, proposed project would include an approximately 5,000 square foot multi-purpose community center, educational exhibits, a veterans memorial, maritime displays, public art, an information kiosk and landscaping. And there would be a landscape walkway that would connect the ship to the promenade. 
So one of the questions you probably have is what we had, you know, they, they've been considering moving to the fishing slip, but no decision has been made yet regarding that move. So the question was, well, where's the proposed park going to be? Well, right now, there's one of the diagrams. Um, one of the, the proposed park currently has been designed for its current location. However, if they get the grant, and that's a fairly big if, I think, but if they get the grant and there is a decision that is made to move um, the Iowa over to the fishing slip prior to the time they would they actually start construction under the grant. And yet between the time you get the grant and take, you know, we're talking about two or three years before this would happen. Um, if that happens, then they would actually renegotiate with the state to have the park move to their new site at the fishing pier, if that happens. If, however, um, the, they've already started construction on the park, and then they decide they're going to actually make the move, the park would just stay right where it is. So there, that's, a, that's the better um, design of to show the, the community center is the kind of, what does it look like? The arch look over there is actually the community center. So it's just a rough drawing of the landscaping they plan to put in. We had a lot of discussion around um, using native plants and they're gonna be doing some consulting with local groups on, on that. Um, that. So what you have before you is a letter of support for this project that received unanimous vote at the committee. Any questions or comments? Oops, that's the wrong one. Oops. If there are no questions or comments, you may want to go ahead and take a vote. Uh, Diana? Yes. There are, there are a lot of ifs in your presentation. If this, if that. Um, why do we need to vote on it now when there's... Oh, some... because the, 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 uh, the proposal's due tomorrow. Ah. Okay. And, and Lori, it's they want to get, they wanna get the fun. It's, it's taking advantage of an opportunity that exists. And the, the if was just to say there, there's a way out. If, if there is a change, it's possible to make the change. Okay, thank you. Okay, so- I want to get um, the funding now. Just let me say that it, this is not a committee, right? Yes. So we're on discussion now on this because it looks like we have people that uh, are already making comments. So we're on the discussion and we do have some hands raised. Rock, did I, did I hear you that you had a comment or a question? I was just saying they're applying for the available funding now so they can get it. And then if they have to move and they probably are, it'll just go to where the, it, they finally end up. So. I see, okay. So we do have a couple of hands up. I have uh, John DeMeglio will go first and then right after John, we'll have Gwen. John, you wanna? Yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, sure how this is going to work. Uh, to get to that park, is the park is geared to the kids? Number one question. And number two question is, do you have to pay to get to it? Do you have to pay for to get in the parking lot? Well, there's, I'll give you two answers to that. Um, the parking lot, I'm sure they would continue to have to pay, but you don't have to go into that parking lot to get to it. And that's one of the beauties of connecting it to the promenade. Um, and then you can walk in from the promenade. So that's, in, in terms of, it's not particularly geared to children. It's more geared to the, to the maritime, celebrating the maritime accomplishments than it is to, to children. And it's a relatively small park. But the community center could be used in a variety of ways, including programming for children, and it would be open to the community. Okay. Uh, okay thank you. Gwen, you're next. Go ahead. And uh, once again, Diana, the uh, overall choice of greenery and, and things like that are still up for uh, public comment. This is not set in stone, correct? Right. The, and what we what they agreed to at our meeting was to consult with e either the Land Conservancy or there were a couple of, of organizations that Alan Franz recommended Good. to consult with and they agreed to do that. Wonderful. Thank In you. fact, they get more points if they include native plants. Uh, as well as possible features for the marine birds uh, to be able to perch. I know we have a problem with blue, blue heron perches now that... Mm. 
Yeah, I'm good. I can't comment on. All right, thank you. Okay, I don't see any other hands up. Uh, so I'm gonna say that the discussion period is over. Uh, Christian, would you be so kind as to uh, take the roll count, please? Yes, Mr. Chair. Rock. Yes. Armando. I'm sorry, what was that, Armando? Yes. Okay. John B. Yes. Mary. Aye. Adrianita. Adrianita. Come back. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can. Okay. I I voted yes. Thank you. Bra Braun. Yes. John D. No. Dan. Yes. Cynthia. Yes. Gwen. Yes. Laurie. Yes. Jan. Yes. Melanie. Yes. Kelly. Yes. Alec. Yes. Ray. Yes. Chris. Yes. Mr. Chair, the motion carries with all yeses except for one no. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item. The next item um, is to consider a community impact statement in support of a council file. This is a council file. It's a little tricky because the council file is to oppose Senate Bill 10. And Senate Bill 10 is another attempt by the state to force upzoning on local entities. Senate Bill 10 would allow the city to upzone by right a parcel currently zoned for a single family to allow potentially 10 units on what is now a single family lot without any environmental review, if it is within a half a mile of a major transit stop or on what they consider to be a high quality bus corridor, or it's in a job rich area, or it's in an urban infill site, which describes a lot of Los Angeles. Um, this, would, this would duplicate some of the provisions of the city's TOC program without the TOC requirements for affordable housing. So there would be no affordable housing requirements in there. You could just put up 10 units, that's it. Um, the proposed community impact statement would support a motion by council member Koretz to include opposition to this SB 10 in the city's legislative platform, thus instructing the city's lobbyists to actively oppose it. The proposed CIS states that SB 10 is another example of the state legislature seeking to take land use planning away um, from local government, may destroy the character of our neighborhoods, has the potential to overwhelm our infrastructure, and does nothing to address the lack of affordable housing. Indeed, it may push land costs even higher. Furthermore, it would create additional bureaucracy by requiring the state to develop and update a map of job rich areas every five years. So this was, again, came unanimously out of committee. So just to be clear, Diana, a yes vote would support the city council's opposition to SB 10. Right, so if you oppose SB 10, you wanna vote yes on this. Great, okay. Uh, any discussion? I see one hand up and that looks like Lori. Uh, thank you, Ray. Diana, this is horrendous. So, um, the way I'm reading this, who would be in support of this? Uh, construction companies or that are making big money off of this? Um, uh, um, um, developers that want to come in and um, just put up a lot of units. That's primarily what I would think. Um, so, Mark, there, Mark may also have some input on the, who would be in favor, but developers would be the big beneficiary of this. People that are speculate land speculators. Isn't this why totally, it up cost? Isn't this totally against things that we have been fighting for for years to have yes. local government have a say in these type of programs? 
Yes. It's actually interesting, Lori. Some of the people who support this, I can't believe they support it. I want you to know I don't. I think it's horrendous as well. And that's why uh, we should vote accordingly. Well, thank you for this information. And the CIS clearly states what all the issues are. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I have another hand, Dan Dixon, go ahead. Just a brief comment. This is, uh, this whole thing is rife with the arrogance of the government of the state I, at many levels, but particularly the legislature right now. The, the number 10 on a, on a single family dwelling unit, where on earth did that come from other than the greedy <laughs> individuals we're talking about? Uh, no uh, relief for affordable housing. Uh, Diane is absolutely right about it, driving up the, uh, further driving up real estate. And it, it, I, I'm speechless, I'm speechless. If I could vote yes 10 times, I would. <laughs> and the other thing we'll do in addition to following the CIS, we can, we're not allowed to actually lobby our state legislatures, but we can do, and what we do do is we send them a copy of the CIS. <laughs> so that's good. What we do. So, uh, Diana, I think what I'm hearing though is that there is this this uh, support of this uh, city council measure allows the city to put it on their legislative agenda so that they in turn can lobby up in Sacramento? Yes, that's what it does. Right, okay. If, if, if it passes the city council. All right, uh, let me see. I see uh, John DeMeglio and then Braun. John DeMeglio, you're up. Yeah, I'm on here. Uh, it's kind of hypocritical because the whole downtown area has been overbuilt with less parking. And now, now we're thinking, well, where are we going to put the brakes on? And I've been I've been preaching it all along that this stuff is going to get out of hand, especially the units that can be in residential areas that anybody can build a unit in back of their residential home. It's all out of hand, and we let it get there. So um, it's nothing different than the downtown San Pedro being ruined. Thank you. Uh, Brian, you're up. Uh, yeah, I, I assume also that the um, <clears throat> definitions of, of high quality bus corridor and jobs rich area um, are pretty vague and, and overbroad as well. Is that accurate? That's accurate. Yeah, so there's really, <laughs> even if somebody was for this, there's, there's really no way to uh, even put, put the cork in it uh, once they open the bottle. Okay, I see no other hands. Um, oh, okay, uh, Cynthia. Is our city council supporting this? Do we know? Well, they haven't voted on it yet. We wouldn't do. We, we do a community impact statement before they vote. Right. I was just wondering. Them. Okay. That's that, that's why we express our opinion yes. when we do. Okay. Again, see no other hands up. The ones with developer uh, donors probably do. Let's go ahead and take yeah. the vote. Uh, Christian, would you please be so kind? Yes, Mr. Chair. Rock. Yes. Armando. Ar Armando. Should we come back to Armando? Yeah, let's come back. Okay. John B. Yes. Mary. Aye. Adrianita. Adrianita. Well, we can come back to her too. Yeah. Braun. Yes. John D. Yes. 
Dan. Yes. Cynthia. Yes. Gwen. Yes. Laurie. No. Laurie. Still wet in towel. Laurie's a yes, and I'm letting you know Armando got um, switched to attendee. I'm moving him over. Okay. okay. Jan. Yes. Melanie. Yes. Kelly. Yes. Alec. Yes. Ray. Yes. Chris. Yes. I'll go back to Adrianita. Yes. And yes. Arm I got that one. Thank you. Armando. I Armando. He's not there. Okay, I can record it as not voting then if he's still there, but he's not yeah. he's not choosing to abstain. So I'll I'll put it as not voting. Oh, wait, he just vote time again. Armando, what he, do you vote? He is muted. Armando, please unmute yourself. Armando. Okay. Somebody's been kicking me off the system twice already. Wow. I kicked off the system twice. Then I wasn't put back on the panel. When I came back, I couldn't answer you guys. Couldn't get through to you guys. And that's okay. the last two questions are yes. You're voting yes. Okay. Thank you, Armando. It's unanimous. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I Finally, I have a few a few updates. Well, it'll oh, Rock has his hand up. Rock, uh, what, what you want to? If I can just make a quick comment, I'm not trying to get in a general argument or discussion here. But this is this thing has nothing to do with what's going on downtown and other places. We're taking parking lots and underutilized assets and creating needed housing here based on uh, tax incentives. This is very weird. I don't know what this is. So. Uh, there's good development, there's bad development, and what's going on downtown, I think, is fabulous. So, okay, thank you. Um, Diana, did you uh, have something more to say? Yeah, I had a, a couple updates I wanted to give. Um, sure. Yeah, first of all, you may recall the motion that we did <laughs> to the end of the 110 freeway um, and things that needed to be done. We did a lot of follow up to that motion, and as a result, um, some of you may have noticed that the repairs were made to the bridge. Um, I understand that right after it got made, there was another accident, ruined <laughs> another accident, and th but that accident has already been repaired also. Caltrans um, cut down the weeds at the entrance to the freeway, and at least some of the lights have been repaired. I was told they were all repaired, but when I went down there to look, it looks like there's some still not working, so we'll continue to follow up on that. We received a response from the Recreation Parks to the letter we sent regarding Pet Park Canyon. Unfortunately, it was a fairly unresponsive letter citing reduced staffing and budget cuts. There's one item they say they will do this year and that was to remove the dangerous rusted fencing at the Hernandez Ranch area. Unfortunately, the bid they previously received has expired. So now they have to go out to bid again. Hmm. But we will continue to follow up on this. Ponta Vista is moving along. The first group of, of nine homes, and then day I was told it might be as many as 11 in sub area one have been sold. Those are the largest single family homes. This, there'll be 76 of them all together. The town homes in sub, sub area three are now um, up for sale. Sub area two, which has the smaller single family homes, just received the final approval from the city and they anticipate construction on those will start later this month. Finally, the plans for sub area five were just submitted to the city. KB Homes will be the builder for this area and they are tentatively scheduled to present at our April Northwest Planning and Land Use meeting. Um, the Port and Hakla are moving ahead with the plans to convert the rail right of way adjacent to the promenade between first and third street into a park. You may recall that we take, took a position opposing that at least until the waterfront connectivity plan is completed and has been shown 
not to be needed for that purpose. So there is some noise about people testifying at the March 18th Board of Harbor Commissioners meeting to that effect. If you are interested in testifying, you should go to, onto the port website and read about how to testify at a meeting or call me for more information. Um, currently, the way they're doing it is they're taking testimony on a pre-recorded phone line that they then play at the commission meeting. So you need to know the process. It's different than a neighborhood council Zoom meeting. Um, North Gappy, you, you heard referenced um, by Augie, the final phase of the North Gappy um, veining plan there actually will connect from where it ends now, it'll connect um, along the railroad tracks down to where uh, the park and ride is and then it'll come through the park and ride to, to connect. So what it'll, it'll do is it will provide much more eyes onto that property back there. And I think it will result in um, better keeping up of the, of the property on the other side of the railroad track. We were on there, over there on Saturday and cleaned out a lot of trash. Um, the next meeting, the next joint meeting is Wednesday, this Wednesday, March 10th. And the primary item will be the plans for the redevelopment of Rancho San Pedro. The next regular Northwest meeting is March 24th, but there's a po possibility, probably a strong possibility that that one is going to be canceled. That ends my report. Thank you, Diana. Uh, let's kind of, can we go back up the uh, agenda? Oh, wait a minute. I see a hand being raised. Uh, John, you want to go ahead and make your comment? Yeah. I just want to go back to that, you know, building 10 units uh, and and building hundreds of units down in the downtown area, I don't see any difference. Uh, it, it's all wrong and it's all congesting the area and it's not doing anything good for, and, and, and from the people I talk to in town, nobody's nobody likes it. Uh, you, all you're doing is putting in a whole bunch of little condos in there for people. Um, and, and they can do it differently and they can do it to where they support low income and all that. But the way they're doing it now, they're going to create a ghetto. Just the, just my comment. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, move back up to the uh, beginning of the agenda. Not to the very beginning, but of reports. I'm going to budget and finance. You want me to go to budget and finance, right? That's fine. Yep. Okay. I'm trying to get there. <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, sorry. Uh, I got it. There we go. I'm not Cheryl. I'm not as quick. And you have the documents, right, Lori? I'm getting there. I just just watch your language, Lori. <laughs> what? What? Um, gobbledygooks. How's that? Um, I have it up on my screen. They should be attached. Yes. Okay. You guys can't see that yet. So let me find out why. <clears throat> Can you see the MER? No, no. nothing. Okay, so let's try that again. Now we got it. 25th times the charm. <laughs> okay. Um, so this wasn't ready by the time we had our committee meeting. It doesn't process until the fifth of the month and our meeting was like the third, I think, yeah. So anyway, this is not out of committee. So I'm gonna need a motion for this. And a second. I'll make a motion to accept. Uh, can you just please say your your name when you make a motion or your second? And, and if you can, uh, can you just hit the highlights on this? Uh, Is that Cynthia, Mr. Chair? Yes. When Henry second. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and then I'll do a roll call vote. M Melanie. Huh? Melanie. 
Can you kind of just go over the highlights of what we're okay. What we're we um, time spent was the 600 process by um, Upper Heart Communications. That was it for this month. And so it leaves a balance of $20,603.18. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Discussion, if you like. Any discussion at all? Um, okay. Call for the vote. Um, Rock? Yes. Armando. Yes. John Rivera. Yes. Mary. Aye. Adrianita. Yes. Ron. Yeah. John DeMeglio. No. Dan Dixon. Yes. Cynthia. Yes. Gwen. Yes. Lori. Yes. Jan. Yes. Melanie, yes. Kelly. So sorry. Yes. And Christian. Chris? Yes. And Ray. Yes. Okay. Next is the budget. And so we moved all the funds that we agreed on to move it over um, for the 5,000 for the MPG last meeting. We, um, scroll up, Lori. And so then we have um, an outreach, 4,576.29. And then we have 5,000 existing in the MPG that's going on right now. 1,300 left in elections and total 20,603.18 left. Um, this is out of committee, so any discussion? I see none, so call for the vote. Armand, or er, Rock? Yes. Armando? Yes. John Babera? Yes. Mary Chan? Aye. Adrianita. Yes. Braun? Yes. John DeMiglio. No. Dan Dixon? Yes. Cynthia? Yes. Gwen? Yes. Lori? Yes, of course. Jan Kane? <laughs> yes. Melanie, yes. Kelly? Yes. Ray? Yes. And Chris? Yes. Okay, next. I have a request for um, to use the money. This is already budgeted on our budget for the newsletter, but this is for the newsletter, the last one, newsletter number two, to approve using the 4450. And this will be for elections to publish all the candidates and stuff. So any discussion? Okay, so call for the vote. Um, Rock? Yes. Armando? Yes. John Babera? Yes. Mary? Aye. Adrianita? Yes. Braun? Yes. John DeMeglio. No. Dan Dixon. Yes. Cynthia. Yes. Gwen. Yes. Lori. Yes, of course. Jan. Yes. Melanie, yes. Kelly. Yes. Ray. Yes. And Christian, or Chris, Chris Vallier. Yes. Okay. And then the final one. So this is an invoice from 2020, June, but it's from the last fiscal year. This is the one and only invoice that we can get them to pay Cheryl for. So this is from last year's budget, but we have to approve it because it is out of last year's budget to pay it out of this year's. 
So this is out of committee. It's for $233.48. Any discussion on this? Okay, call for the vote. Rock? Yes. Armando? Yes. John Barbera? Yes, again. Mary? Aye. Adrianita? Yes. Ron? Yes. John DeMeglio? Abstain. Okay, Dan Dixon? Yes. Cynthia? Yes. Gwen? Yes. Lori? Yes. Jan? Yes. Melanie, yes. Kelly? Yes. And Ray? Yes. And Chris Ballier? Yes. Okay, that's it. All right. Thank you, Melanie. You're welcome. Okay. So budget and finance, uh, it looks like we have community issues. Anything to report, uh, Dan and or uh, John B? Nothing major. I will say that like a couple of other committees uh, in our neighborhood council, we are down a person uh, with the passing of Pete. And uh, I'm sorry, I missed, uh, I wasn't able to speak earlier. Um, my comments will be um, elsewhere. Uh, good man. Pete's last uh, public comment, though, was in opposition to the new skate park, the, the re revived skate, uh, skate park. And although um, I disagree with his position, I want to let people know that he was sincere about it. Uh, he, thought, uh, he thought that the park and ride needed to be preserved for the park and ride and that uh, there was already a perfectly good skate park at uh, Peck Park. And um, so he did not see the need for it. As I say, the committee disagreed, but uh, he certainly had the right to his opinion, which he expressed often. On, so the skate park is, they're still in negotiations on a contract with the uh, uh, some department of the city, Bureau of Public Works, I believe. So that will be moving along. Uh, the train situation, the train horn situation is under discussion. I've been reading a fair amount about it. I'm trying desperately to begin to know 1% of what Pat Nave knows about it. Uh, so that's taking a while, but we will be moving on with um, towards working on finding a solution to some of these late night train horns. Uh, we've been told that in the past, uh, when, well, we know in the past, we could report street repairs as part of our uh, neighborhood council function. There were uh, dates set aside for street repairs. We were encouraged to locate places that needed repairs and report to the city. Uh, that's all gone by the wayside, presumably because of funding. So from now on, at this point, all street repairs should be reported directly to 311. The only good part about reporting anything to 311 is they log your call. And so your name and, and the point of your call is in the system, whether it be for a pothole or any other issue you have, trash pickup, uh, uh, wrecked cars sitting on the streets, that sort of thing. So 311 does have some advantages. So let's pepper them with requests for street repairs and uh, see how that works. Um, the uh, Defense Fuel Supply Depot on Gaffey Street has been, John may have discussed this at the last meeting, which I did, was unable to attend. It's been split into two. Uh, issues. One is the 300 acres roughly on Gaffey Street. The other is the fuel terminal on in, in, in which is in Long Beach. They've separated the two. 
the a new RF, a new proposal is going out from the Navy regarding the Long Beach property. So that's been bisected. We there's really nothing to do about that at this point, except follow it. And the same is true on Gaffey. Uh, some RFPs have been accepted for review by the Navy, and they are under review. Uh, the Navy won't say anything about it until some decision is made as to which, if any, how many of them are brought up for further uh, review, at which time we'll get a look at them. That is an ongoing thing. Um, I think Vic Christensen is here in the room with us. Vic, uh, without, uh, let's make this exquisitely sparse on detail, but can you give us an update on what the committee is doing with respect to the Science Center? Uh, Dan, that's a separate, um, that's item I on our calendar, on our agenda. Oh, I'm is very- this, Is this particular item, Dan, is it specifically discussed and- No, uh, uh, forgive me, I, I see the separate listing down there. Vic is on our committee and we talk about it all the uh -huh. time, but uh, certainly save it uh, for letter I. Thank you. All right, great. Um, I see some hands up, uh, so let's uh, start off with John and then Gwen. John, go ahead. John B. I just got to tap in with Dan. Uh, it, you all know that I, I told the uh, Rock earlier, but the light on Western and Biner, they've done that. That light has been done like that from DOT because of the pandemic and the schools that's down there. Uh, giving the kids a chance to walk across and everything. So once the pandemic's over, they will return the light back at its normal function. And also, I don't know if you know, but there's a this group called the CPR that this uh, Matthews guy, he goes around cleaning up everything. Well, they did a hell of a cleanup on the skate park in the parking lot. They went around the other side of the fence, a railroad picked up, uh, he was telling me they, they picked up some 40 uh, needles and everything, but just, uh, I think I sent the videos to you, Ray, um, the before and after, and uh, they did a hell of a job. It looks really good and clean. So, um, you know, that's it. Thank you, John. Um, if, if I could, I'll make a quick comment. I, I really appreciate the, the work that the uh, uh, community issues is doing to try to up the uh, appearance and, and uh, accountability on the skate park underneath the uh, freeway there. I think our, our biggest uh, hurdle at this particular point is to get uh, Caltrans, if I remember correctly, to make sure that they keep the graffiti and uh, off the uh, pillars the support uh, pillars for the uh, ramps and all that. So I, I perhaps maybe a conversation with our assembly member, we can get them to uh, maybe help us in keeping that part clean because it seems like it's an easy target for uh, vandals out there. So. Um, Ray, that's a, that's a great point. And it goes, speaks to the larger point of uh, community identity and how we look to the world. There are so many unlovely entrances into San Pedro that uh, anything we can do at any of those points, whether it's five points or, or the end of the freeway or the area you're describing, anything that can be done to enhance those, maybe it involves a large mural on the smokestack at the city yard, and perhaps uh, beats and that group is onto something. But anything we can do to make our city more welcoming, our town more welcoming uh, is valuable as far as I'm concerned and we should pursue those, uh, pers pursue opportunities in those areas as we are able to do it. Thank you. Great. Okay, we have one additional hand up and that's Gwen. Gwen, go ahead. 
you, Dan. Well, in regards to uh, making uh, our our entrance points presentable, uh, I'm I am anxious. Uh, Diana had mentioned that the uh, that Triangle Park, uh, the Caltrans area, right at the end of the 110 freeway, is being turned into a dog park. I'm wondering what the status is on that. If they've uh, figured out parking. And uh, I believe that there was that safety issue. Uh, uh, I think there was that fatality with the child at that point. I'm wondering if you guys can keep up with the status of how that's going, because I, I'm thinking, you know, they should be able to have that landscaped in short order and solved. I'm hoping it's uh, how long has it been um, still in development? And then um, a, a point of clarification, the the defense fuel su uh, support point. Did you say that that's still up in the air and the Navy is is holding on that as far as comment? Is that is that what you said? It means we're we're not. We can send them any letters that we want individually uh, or even as a group. But the time for public comment on the RFPs uh, has not arrived yet. Uh, the Navy is still evaluating the RFPs that have been received for the property on Gaffey Street. But Long Beach is no longer, the, the Terminal Island portion of it, which is where the Navy would actually refuel ships, for instance, that is uh, months away from uh, any action being taken. Thank, thank you for clarifying we'll that. Keep, I, I I'll, I'll keep on the, with the PIO down in Seal Beach. Thank you, sir. Thank right. you. Great. Okay, I see no other hands up for this item. Uh, can we Sorry. see what is next on the agenda? I'm trying to pull up the public safety report. It's not behaving. Okay, so. Um, That's Melanie. Melanie, would you like to maybe start your comments? On public yeah. Safety? Um, Originally on our agenda, we had um, a council file 21-0002 and in researching, we found that it had already been resolved. And so I have the report down, it should be Lori, the one of the pages submitted down there. It's on the note. See There's supposed to be an order. Right here. Is that yeah. it? Okay. So here it is. It whoopsie. It talks about um, they launched a new pilot program, which dispatches sworn officers with a mental health. And remember, we on another council file, we had done filed on this that that was what we recommended when we were talking about the money for the police department being reduced and turning things over into mental health. One of the things we recommended was that they deploy. A police officer with a um, mental health officer, not to just send them out by themselves. So that's what they're doing now. They're a um, mental health clinician to certain mental health calls as part of a series of efforts to remove law enforcement from nonviolent and non criminal situations. Um, it's called Alternatives to Dispatch. Um, the, they respond to thousands of mental health calls every year, but advocates say that they don't need an armed response, they need a mental health professional. Um, now a clinician will be dispatched right away to nonviolent calls with a sworn officer. Um, so just Chief Michael Moore says that just the last three weeks, there's been 91 incidents where mental health professionals have handled a call rather than the police officer. So it's a good follow-up to, so there was no need to file on that council file because it had pretty much been resolved on the response of it. Um, the other thing I attended the, um, on the next page, I attended the police Harbor Town Hall for the police um, commission. And, um, basically some notes from it. They were number 21 for property crime reduction within LAPD strategies for 2020, 
was to reduce violent and gun crime and to investigate violent crime in the encampments. Pilot program was started, complex cameras involving multiple agencies, license plate readers, social media, and cyber watch. Strategies for 2021 is community reporting through an expanded online system to increase patrol, geographic investigations for violent crimes to short response time. Current response times are 5.7 minutes for 911 and 34 minutes for non-emergency. Current patrol plan is based on 9,700 LAPD officers. How many will be coming out of the academy officers work over time if there are further cuts for two to three years and no hiring freezes? LAPD is coming up with another number to call for non-emergency calls separate from the Ask LAPD number. With the way it is now, there's a 40 minute wait with a second call being made. Deputy Chief Scott from LAPD South Bureau said, they will give Harbor the resources they need. So far, Harbor has received extra, extra resources on guns, gangs, and parole leading to 35 suspects in jail compared to only nine the year before. DC Scott also stated the Harbor homeless crimes are not gang related. Alternative ways are being looked at to deal with homelessness. Wilmington is being earmarked for this. With the defunding of the HOPE team, it was, was disbanded. Dee Dee Hirsch stated that mental health services are responding to mental health calls noon to eight. Then the SMART team and patrol officers are responding from 8 p.m. to noon. No other agencies have stepped up to take hold from the LAPD 24 seven. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, there was no sustainability report. Yes, we we did not achieve quorum, so there was no uh, no meeting. Uh, all I want to announce is that the Joint Sustainability uh, Committee will be rescheduling their uh, their meetings for uh, the second Thursday of every month, and uh, the next one should be once again. Uh, I believe that's April April eighth. Um, Bear with me. I've got a. I've got an older. Is that a different time of the month than you normally hold sustainability? The Joint Sustainability Committee. Uh -huh. That is the one that is the All Harbor. We've got it. we're inviting All Harbor um, neighborhood councils to the Joint Sustainability. So that will be the second Thursday. The uh, the sustainability meeting once again is the third Thursday of every month, and that will continue, and we will be meeting as as normally scheduled okay um when I, I wanted to bring to your attention an item that came to my attention but it's uh, broadly known that there is a lot of uh i, I don't know scavenging i guess the down in uh, the tide pools for uh, mussels and things like that and it seems to me that, uh, well, there was a fish and game uh, uh, person at, at uh, Sirens uh, about a couple of weeks ago. And he said that that whole area where they have been picking these things have been pretty much, that whole area is pretty much decimated, but it's still, if we do something now, uh, we might be able to get, uh, you know, that thing might be able to grow back over time. I'm wondering if perhaps maybe being that this is a localized area and something that uh, Coastal is, uh, has shown interest in, and maybe the, the three San Pedro neighborhood councils can maybe look at opportunities to support the work for the tide pool areas, because uh, there are definite people going down there and picking stuff even at, at today. Uh, and um, it's, it, you know, we might be hitting a place where it's just, uh, we're not going to be able to return to a, 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 an ecosystem that will support the, those things that any longer. So perhaps, uh, maybe you could look at it. Maybe there's some something we can do to support Fish and Game in their efforts to change the, uh, excuse me for saying this, but change the tide uh, over the uh, you know, in that particular uh, area. So perhaps maybe you can take a look at that. Yes, I I, I remember uh, uh, the last uh, uh, California Coastal Commission meeting. Um, 
uh, several representatives from uh, the community, the coastal community, um, spoke to them about this. And uh, there seemed to be a lot of action taken on that. And uh, also the uh, 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 fish and wildlife had been had been uh, communicated with it. This has been this has been actually a part of uh, some news items uh, and as well as in the newspaper. And uh, I'm I'm sorry to hear that it is still a, a, an ongoing concern. And yeah, um, I will I will bring it up, and we we should possibly as a united front um, speak on this. That's very unfortunate because there seemed to be very direct action being taken on that. Yeah, I, it, it would. I think it would be appreciated by the community as a whole to save our. our uh, yeah, it's it's religion. outrageous. It's outrageous. Yeah. Um, uh, and it, for those who are not familiar with what's going on, um, the tide pools uh, are an, a rare and extraordinary place where most people, you know, it's an educational area uh, where kids can actually see a lot of a lot of marine life um, and uh, it is legal currently to allow that area to be picked if you have a fishing license you can you can uh, um, uh, it's not really scavenging but you can harvest uh, at, uh, pretty much anything that you see there to a certain number of uh, there's a certain quota. But uh, people have been. Excuse me, Gwen. This isn't an agendized item, so I'm not sure we can go in this much detail. Can you can you move this issue to your joint sustainability committee? Absolutely, absolutely. That would be awesome because I know there's a lot of people concerned, and I don't mean to cut you off, but we can't go into that much detail. I don't think when it's not on the agenda. I hear you. Yes. You guys get Thank the you. idea, though. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, youth and outreach. Okay, thank you, Ray. I'll just hit some of the highlights on, on um, youth and outreach. So I already talked about newsletter. So I had received a request to put a feature um, on our website. So when somebody goes to the calendar, oh, which by the way, committee chairs, please send at least two to three months worth of meeting dates to Christina to have them on the calendar. People like to plan ahead of time and you're just doing a month by month and you'll get, you have a better chance of increasing your attendance. But um, Diana asked for us to consider a feature of add to calendar. So for instance, when uh, Ray sends out a meeting invite, you'll get an email saying you're invited to the blah, blah um, committee meeting. And there's something there that says click to add to your calendar. And in fact, it usually gives you a choice of three to add to a Yahoo calendar, an Outlook, or a Google. So she wanted to have a feature like that just for meetings. So people who were not necessarily um, board members or committee members could, could look at our calendar. And this is why it's so important that these be on there. Um, and then they could click add to calendar. Now, right now, because we use Google um, for our platform, it will only add to a Google calendar, which is one of the probably the most commonly used one. So the only danger with this is that you board members or committee members, if you use that, you're gonna come in as an attendee instead of a panelist. But this is a great feature. I know Diana tries to send notices out to all the planning and land use um, people of interest or that are on other, you know, maybe a joint committee. So we tried it and we're gonna continue to try it. So you'll, you'll notice that it was on there for this board meeting tonight. So I wanted to mention that. We tried to answer all the requests sent to our committee um, virtual pathways to employment looks like it's really happening probably on April 17th thanks to the thanks to the boys and girls club we just stepped up to bat and are working like crazy we put together a quick planning committee uh, we have another meeting this week uh, virtual workshops and virtual interviews and they're working out the logistics and there's also going to be a virtual fashion show with how to dress for success for less so just wanted to let you know we're doing that the inventory of backpacks that we had for Pathways will not be part of the virtual program, but instead we're working to find local foster harbor area foster programs where either aging out youth or just youth that are taken from the foster and, um, system and put into another home that they never again have to carry their stuff in a hefty trash bag. 
that they could put some things in those backpacks. And um, John Barbera uh, worked with the Assistance League and Operation School Bell apparently is kind of on hold. But what we are finding is they do work with low income families for the dental program with youth. And so we're gonna donate a portion of those um, to those students. So, and the people who uh, helped pay for these backpacks approved these programs that they're going to youth. Um, and then um, that's really the highlights for, for youth and outreach. That was, uh, you know, we're continuing to monitor the website, add little updates as we go. And, and that's it, Mr. Regalado. And next on the calendar, uh, on the agenda is the Christensen Science Center, but I don't have a report to pull up on that. So if I could just make a quick mention uh, to all the chairs of the committees, if you could uh, do your community a, uh, a service by advertising or by making mention of the fact that we are looking for candidates for the upcoming election. So please uh, keep that in mind. Uh, remind people, especially people who are dropping into your meetings and things like that. Uh, uh, Octaviano made a good point about saying that we can always use good people and we have to go out there and sometimes invite people to participate. So, um, And Ray, some uh, of our committees and, did do that. Um, no, I did, I, I yeah, some do, of them did. Just, just a reminder for others. Yeah, just keep there's a going. hand up. I don't know if it's yeah, I see a hand. Mary, yeah, you're, um, you're muted. You want to unmute yourself? I see yes. your hand. So two things. Um, I noticed that the sustainability meeting is not on the website yet for this month. So we want to probably put that on. Um, number two, uh, according to the documents that Melanie presented about the, the budget of the police now is going through um, other things such as, there's the, the one is called um, the policy that passes measure J. There's subcommittees and their meetings that's been going on. There is one tomorrow. If you wanted to know about it, I can send the details on to you. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's uh, move on to the Christian Science Center. Chris or John DeMigna, do you have any updates? And then we'll we'll give some time to uh, Vic Christensen. Yes. Yeah, there's a uh, actually a meeting tomorrow evening. Um, I think the focus of that will be uh, the murals. Uh, there's, uh, I think, three options for uh, mural art to be placed on a couple of the buildings there. Um, and to the best of my knowledge, the only other ongoing concerns have been uh, sort of maintenance and um, uh, you know attendance issues at the center. But it is, as the rest of the district is, still closed uh, in person. So it's kind of whatever those are doing on site is kind of their business. But uh, yeah, we do have a meeting tomorrow evening, uh, 5 p.m. I do not believe that it is public, uh, but whatever comes out of that, I'll, I'll share next month. Thank you. Yeah, I, I want to say something. Yeah, and, yeah. And I, I want to agree with Chris. Whatever they do on that campus, uh, as far as the maintenance and everything, is pretty much their business. We do have uh, um, uh, our committee that, that, that hopefully gets together. And, and, but they haven't gotten together because of the COVID and, and things are, are with LA Unified aren't going to be quick and, 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 uh, you know, right done right there in front of it, it's going to take time. And, and right now, I think they've been upfront with us and they've been, uh, very working with us from this point on. And hopefully we keep that uh, um, going. And, and, you know, right now we're in the right direction and we've been in the right direction. And hopefully we continue to go in a, in a good direction and, and keep a good rapport between the committee and, and, and LA Unified, which they've been, they've been nothing but um, supportive, I think. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. All right, thank you, John. Uh, Vic Christensen, uh, would you like to also comment? Oh, absolutely. Um, I didn't hear what the beginning of what Chris said because I was made to panelist and rejoining, so I missed part of that. But um, 
I did hear him say that there's going to be a meeting tomorrow uh, evening. Um, part of the agenda for that is going over the mural ideas with the artist that apparently LAUSD has uni uh, unilaterally selected, um, going over some feed and be fed updates and going over a update on the program with Banneker School. Um, I'm not sure what that one is right now, but um, I, I have to absolutely disagree with, with John's comment that LAUSD has been up front um, the only reason we're having this meeting tomorrow is because I brought it up. The only reason we are discussing the mural is because I brought it up. They did not voluntarily do any of this until I suggested that it be done. So they are not at all being upfront. Now, once they're cornered, then they may talk about stuff and, and feign being upfront. But um, until they're cornered, absolutely not. Um, and one of the things uh, we, I mentioned at the last board meeting was that we may do a letter to LAUSD about the lack of progress and things like that. Um, at our committee meeting, we decided that it would be better to suggest that they have another meeting with the advisory council, which is what I did, um, suggesting that, and they went along with that. Um, and that's why we're having it tomorrow. So. There will be no letter at this point um, to LAUSD. There may be later, but that's kind of on hold at this point until we see how things go at the uh, advisory council meeting. Um, and then one of the, you know, separate from LAUSD themselves, um, something that happened about mid-February, um, you know, it happened to be at the Science Center uh, Lawrence Daniel, who's one of the two people who works there full time, and I were there on a weekend to discuss um, some gardening things to be done to fix the desert area where the cactus is. And we found a very sick and or injured red-tailed hawk, which is a protected species. Um, I was able to get it to South Bay Wildlife uh, Rehab up on the hill. Um, in Palos Verdes. And this is kind of a, a half, you know, Science Center related half plug for uh, South Bay Wildlife Rehab. Unfortunately, it was, it was dead shortly after we arrived. Um, after the woman there uh, got done talking with me, um, she went back and checked it and it, it had already died. So it was in really bad shape, but I wasn't aware that that organization existed. So I don't know how many other people may not know about it. Uh, their website is SBWH, or sorry. Uh, hang on, hang on. SBWR, South Bay Wildlife Rehab, dot org, O-R-G, not dot com, dot org. So if you, uh, that's one resource for people who may find wildlife injured or not sure what to do with it. Um, you can go to them. You can, you know, they have a website. You can get their phone number there and give them a call. Um, but I just wanted to to put a plug in for them because they are a very um, useful organization. They're all volunteer run, and so you know they could use donations too, and they usually ask for them. But you can find them online and get their information for how to get there. Uh, but yeah, next next meeting, we should have some more information about what happens at the advisory council meeting tomorrow. All right. Thank you, Victor. Um, I see a couple of hands up again. Uh, uh, John, I want to make a comment. Yeah, um, I do want to make a comment. Uh, I've been working on this committee and we need to do things as a committee, not individual individually. This is a committee that, and I think Christensen uh, is is starting to be annoying to 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 the to the process. Point of order, let, ad hominem. Uh, John, I'm I'm going to ask if we can not make this personal. If you have a comment, it's not make personal. Comment, but please don't make it personal. Yeah, I you just did. Not, so uh, just go ahead personal. and make the comment. And it is not personal. Forward. 
I think the committee needs to speak as one whole. And the, and the, and the, and the, and the committee needs to get together and, 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 and voice our opinions as one whole. That's what a committee is supposed to be. And whether he thinks that, I, I, I think that the, the LA Unified has been up front. Okay. And I'm not going to say they haven't. Okay. okay. Let's Thank move you. on. I'm, I don't want to have a debate about this. We've heard all sides and we're going to move on. Thank you, John and Vic. Um, I appreciate uh, we, that uh, we don't necessarily need to go into this um, any, you know, as far as going back and forth on this, I think it was covered quite well. Um, I see uh, Gwen's hand up and uh, then Chris, I'll give you a last shot at, at a comment. So Gwen, you wanna go ahead? Uh, just to uh, help uh, enhance uh, Vic's comment on South Bay, uh, wildlife rehab, they are, they specialize in raptors, birds, but very specifically, they started with raptors um, and red-tailed hawks, uh, owls, and things like that. Um, but they, they, they focus on birds and flying mammals such as bats. Um, maybe we as a uh, neighborhood council could possibly have a, a, a spot on our website where we uh, have those kind of contacts available, maybe in the future. Thank, Thank you. you, that's a fair request. Thank you. Chris, you wanna make the last comment here? Yeah, just just real briefly um, to, I mean, I, per what uh, Victor and, uh, and John have said, um, I think it's just important for everybody on the board because again, even for the people, uh, John and myself on the committee, who represent the board that we know that there's distinctions in how and why we're participating um to the best of my knowledge victor was in, uh, included as a uh, community member but not as a member of the board of the uh neighborhood council and john and myself were selected by the board to kind of do the the board's uh lifting there so we're kind of approaching from different uh for different reasons and with a different remit and so Victor's observations and his interaction with uh, the LAUSD staff is his own personal uh, responsibility. And it doesn't really reflect the way that John and I, uh, it's, he's not necessarily there for the same reasons we are. And personally, um, you know, my engagement with, uh, uh, with Lou and uh, Terry Ball and, and uh, Mike Romero uh, are as, you know, basically to do what you on the board have sent me there to do. And it's not, you know, I don't, I don't take the same approach to it because I don't have the same relationship that Victor might with the Science Center. So they, we, we're not, you know, John and Victor and I aren't necessarily there in the same capacity, even though we're all on the same committee. Thank you. Um, we have uh, liaison reports and um, I see that we're set up for a homelessness liaison uh, report. So uh, Lori, you wanna go Thank ahead you. and take it? I, I appreciate it. I, I hope some board members and some people actually take the time to read these. I do try to keep the information updated. So um, safe parking opened last week on March 1st in San Pedro at the parking lot kitty corner to the um, municipal building, allowing for 25 vehicles. So I don't have much to report on it because it just opened, but I'm following that. And there's another one that's opened up in, in the Harbor Gateway area. So, um, and then the second page of this report is a flyer on safe parking. And um, I won't go into the details of it, but basically it's for people who are, unfortunately do not have a place to live in, and they're residing in their cars. And this gives them an opportunity to connect with the coordinated entry system and get resources to hopefully get housed. So nobody wants somebody to continue to live in their car, especially not when it's this cold. The Gulch encampment in San Pedro, uh, most people who are involved at all with homeless issues understands that this area has um, grown. It is a safety hazard. Um, we're bringing it up to CD15. There's great concerns that people are um, have tents on a hill right next to Harbor Boulevard where people are driving quickly. And we, we do have great concerns. Um, it was discussed at the working group, um, CD15 working group on homelessness last week. And the day after that meeting in Brentwood, somebody lost control of their car and drove into an encampment. Luckily, nobody was hurt, but it was just illustrating that type of problem. Um, there's a group that has been pushing to um, have the Port of LA 
use some lots that are currently empty, um, called lots E and F, to set up basically, I'm going to call it a tent encampment, to allow people who are living in tents to be able to have a safe, sort of safe place, or at least a flat space that's not near any cars driving by. Um, but it would include sanitation and um, uh, porta potties. And of course, it wouldn't work if it didn't have wraparound services, where at which are really our service providers are stretched to um, the max. So um, there's some contention between the port because it's their property. Um, they have stated some reasons apparently why they don't think this property can be used for that. So we want to try and connect with the uh, port commissioners and see if we can continue that dialogue. So I'll report out when I hear more on that. The bridge home in uh, San Pedro, um, they had to reduce their capacity to uh, comply with COVID. Um, so far, nine people who went through that system have been housed and five people were recently um, gained employment. The interim housing, which is right next to where the safe parking is, currently has 20 residents where normally they would have 40 due to COVID. Um, vaccines are now being made available to um, people um, who are at some of the bridge homes, Project Room Key, um, like at uh, Sunrise Hotel, the county interim housing, all of those places now, if people are 65 or over, um, pregnant, um, or uh, there's, uh, I forgot, there's when I'm now immune com compromised um, that are unhoused will get um, uh, vaccines. And there's the safe parking. So anyway, I try to keep things up to date on our website. That's it. Thank you for the opportunity to share this information. Thank you. Appreciate your work there. Um, we have other liaison uh, uh, opportunities for reports, but I don't see any other uh, submissions. Uh, remember, if you have something you want to report on, let us know so we can get it on the agenda, or well, at least the, the paperwork so that people can look up. Uh, real quick, I mean, I was trying to get ourselves out of here by 845, as we used to do when we were at the park. Uh, and we have run a little bit later. So um, if, if we have no board member wanting to make a general comment on non-agenda items, it, uh, I don't see any hands up, which is great. So I will uh, take any future announcements on agenda item. If not, let us know. Uh, Armando, you have your hand up. Okay, you wanna go ahead? Armando, well, he's an attendee again. Yeah, how did that happen? I have no idea. Okay. Armando, you wanna make your comment from there? Here I am. There you are. Yes, I've been getting knocked off and been put into attendee all night. Uh, actually, Armando, when you get knocked off, when you're coming back in, you're coming in as an attendee. Nobody's knocking you out. It's the way you're, you're um, joining and it must be an internet issue, just so you know. Yes, I'm having an internet issue. I understand that. I'm just trying to make that noted. That's why I haven't been able to respond on time. Hello? So, so do you, okay, do you have a comment or anything that you want yes, to make? Yes, I'd like it noted. That's why I did not respond on time. Throughout okay. The evening. Okay. Thank you. I'll get, I'll get with you and, and share the uh, the link one more time. Okay, Armando, after the in the next day or so? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, no announcements? Okay, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, uh, without objection, I'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Okay, stay safe everybody still, be vigilant. Thank you very much for a good, good meeting. Night. Thank take you. Care, good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Everybody good night. take care. Good night. Good night. Good night, Angelina.